Hello, welcome along. It is round five of the Telenet Super Prestige Series today from Zomhoven. Thanks for joining us here live on GCN Racing. We have the Elite Women's Race coming up shortly. We're going to have a little halftime break, then we'll be back with the Elite Men's Race in its entirety. This race today, if you're not familiar with it, it is mighty. We are in for an epic day of cyclocross. This is Zonhoven. This is the heart of Zonhoven. I just can't believe that human beings actually ride down there. <laughs> I was still a rider, and uh, at that time, my team manager started that race. Well, in my very last season, I told him, hey, look, we found this sandpit, which was just on, on, on the side of the existing course. Why don't you include that? And they said, you must be crazy. Nobody can ride that one. <laughs> what is this? What can you say about that? Ollie's still picking sand out of places he didn't know he had places. Joining me today is Jeremy Powers, and he was there in those epic <laughs> sand dunes. Welcome, Jeremy. What is it that's so special about this Zonhoven race? Oh, man, there's so many things that make it special. Of course, it's a natural amphitheater. There are people that are just all lining the course. I'd say that that's probably one of the most unique and natural features that you can see out uh, on the cyclocross circuit today. The Zonhoven track is uh, is one of the most special ones, in, at least in my eyes. Yeah, well, the T Telenet Super Prestige series so far, it has been absolutely fantastic from the start of this season. Let's have a look back so far. Two wins for Alvarado, one apiece for our Zufi and Yara Castellan. It's been it's been quite a series so far, hasn't it? Jeremy and, and Celine Del Carmen Alvarado absolutely on fire in this one, clearly targeting the overall. Yeah, you can see that Alvarado the under 23 rider taking the uh, taking the points so far uh, quite a bit, quite a bit ahead because this point doesn't these points don't have a big spread but then right after that it's Yara Castellan, Sana Khan, Alice Ar Alice Arzufi, Eva Lechner, uh, Anna Marie Worst, uh, Ellen Van Loy, Lauren Verdanschgat, Inga Vanderheiden, and Manon Bakker. So yeah, it's been a great uh, been a great series so far. We're definitely in the middle of it now here in the the finally into december it is uh it's good to see it's good to see this this series you know is so strong so it's like it's so historic and it has so much uh so much time in the game that i feel like it's been um it's been fun for me to follow every year and this year has not has not disappointed there's been a lot of different winners of these races we heard from erwin vivekan and he said when when he raced this it was kind of a way from from the Sampa area and they found it and I, th I think when I interviewed him he was he was really disappointed that he he never got to to race on 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 this iconic uh, sand pit I mean you were out there with Ollie um, you took him through that to show how tough the, the it is to ride this pro course just kind of try and describe these massive drops on the sand because it must be 
you know, going through a sandpit on the flats, one thing, but going on the on the descents that we have here is is something completely different altogether. Yeah, the sand here is very unique. You know, it's got this like really fast. Um, well, the entrance is quite fast with all of the ruts and the things that come into it. And then you're kind of uh, you're at the mercy of what's been laid out from the riders in front of you. So there's a lot of different <laughs> like like in life, <laughs> Marty, there are a lot of different choices that you can take. And some of them are good and some of them are bad. There's obviously things that are in the sand, kind of like a lurking shark in the ocean. You don't know. Um, and then they just kind of bite you. And I think that there's a uh, there could be like a little bit of a divot you know when we were there oliver hit like a small little hole um that had just been there you know naturally i don't know if there was a rock or so i have no idea what was under there but he hit it and he went flying over the bars and there's i think that the organizers do the best job that they can to get any of the old stumps or any of the rocks or things anything like that but you can see here here's two nair it's just taking out a couple of rocks after the riders have gone over and over and over a section it's uh exposed probably some old cobbles or something that are there and now the uh and now you know uh, he was taking it upon himself to just make sure that no one's going to, you know, crash from that section. So I think it's, uh, I think that there's a lot of hidden obstacles in this one. You have to use a lot of intuition and you have to know the course year after year and, and do a good pre-ride to be able to know like, okay, this is what, this is what's out there today. Now this course in particular, Sana Kant has won this race five times. This is, you know, she was the, the winner last year. This is very much her, you would say, her course but she's not had it her own way at all this season has she no she hasn't she hasn't she's been um she's been starting slow but like i said i was talking with erwin on the podcast i've talked with you a lot about it i think that she's coming in just at the right time so i, I wouldn't expect it won't be long uh as we head into this christmas period which is the heart of the cross season that we start seeing some hands in the air from the world champ yeah, let's have a look at the provisional start list, if we can. We'll uh, take a look at that. Some of the some riders as well. They're coming back off of the training camps. We we were at the uh, the Etias uh, Cross in Essen yesterday, so some riders might have heavy legs. Yeah, I could, it's very possible. But as you can see here, all of the usual suspects can't worse. Van Loy, Arzufi, Captains, Verdanska, Lechner, uh, Casterline, Stells, Sisek, uh, Haydn, uh, Carmen Del Alvarado, Sheeran Van Andre, Anna Kay, Manon Bakker are some of the women that we're going to be looking at today to potentially end up in that front group and, uh, and, and sending off some fireworks out there. Riders are on the start line. Don't forget to subscribe to GCN Racing. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell icon. Give us a thumbs up as well on our live broadcast. We'd uh, really appreciate it if you could do that. Ava Lechner on the start line. Los Cels alongside her. Annabelle Horst, the uh, rider right next to her for uh, Stay Lots, uh, for Triple Seven rather. Uh, Celine Del Carmen Alvarado. Two wins so far in this series. Sana Kant, Anna K. you can just see behind her. Yara Kastelein, the European champion. Lara Vodonskot, you can see in the gap there as well. That's Inga van der Heiden. Alice Maria Azufi here for Triple Seven. Had a, a, like a lot of riders uh, last year. He tumbles on those uh, descents. Riders, the lights are red. We are ready to go. There's Abby May Parkinson, you can see there as well from Trinity Racing. Uh, the British rider. Poised and ready. Look at the focus and concentration on the face of these riders. They're getting that warning. They'll be ready to go. Ava Lechner. Could it be a day for uh, Ava Lechner? You see Sharon Van Anroy right uh, just behind Ava Lechner. 14185. Lights are green. We are off and racing. Celine Del Carmen Alvarado straight down the center. Yara Castelline, Sana Kant, but it's Inga van der Heiden that's got the best start here at the moment. In to the green, it's van der Heiden, Alvarado, Sana Kant, Anna Kay on the inside. A little uh, bump to the side there for Van Anroy. You can see Barbara Borovica, number 15 there. Abby May Parkinson just going through your picture. Kim van der Putter, Inga van der Heiden here. Jeremy, she's got a great start, has uh, Inga van der Heiden. Yes, she has, and she's shown this before that she's young. She's able to go uh, really quick at the starts and take this lead. She's able to use it to her benefit, too. She's put herself in the front group several times this year. Um, we've seen her. She's raced a full cross season, flying the CCC colors, the same team as Mariana Voss. And, um, yeah, she's out in front right now and, and doing doing work on the lower slopes of this track as they make their way up to the infamous call. <laughs> you can see uh, Lowe's Cells just up there as well. 
And there's Anna Kay. So the Experta riders getting themselves up towards uh, the front here. Anik Van Alphen as well, Three towards the front, just getting a little bit bumped there, Anna-Marie Wurst. But Alvarado's got the front now. They've got, again, they've got to be careful here, Jeremy, haven't they, that Alvarado doesn't get a gap very early in this race. We've seen her been able to do this so far this season uh, really well. Yeah, I mean, Alvarado has had, uh, has had been shown that she's able to kind of keep the pace high and continue to keep it high and uh, a lot of the riders as they hit this infamous downhill section now you see Sonic Hunt using that technique really wide stance pushing the bike out in front of her looking up just kind of getting that getting that form down and now Marty they're going to come into this lower section and now they have to ride up this side which has been very very challenging as I was there with uh, when I was over there with Oliver it made it for some just some really hard passes I probably tried that to ride that section 20 times unable to so yeah it's a uh, it's a heck of a course here it's a lot of on a lot of off and the sand is undulating but uh, but yeah getting back to Alvarado very important that they don't let her take an early lead and you can see Sanacat today not interested in giving away any any uh, any gifts to, uh, to any of the uh, potential potential uh, opponents just hanging that right foot out there. Anna Kay has a multiple descents there. Suzanne Weistrock, number 41. She's got a good start as well. Constant, uh, you can see, changes here in the sand onto the grass, back onto the sand again. That's Weistrock. That's got a phenomenal start there. That's uh, Suzanne Maestrock from Proximus Alpha Motorhomes, the Dutch rider. On the run up, Sharon Van Amroy, you can just see. Just behind Anna Marie Wurst on the, this run up. Anna Kay, the podium for Anna Kay yesterday. Ellen Van Loy just grabbing on to the barrier at the side. Ellen Van Loy had a great start yesterday, was up there with, uh, with Mariana Voss and then just faded as the race went on. But they're already a bit of a gap opening from the back of Anna Kay back to uh, Annick Van Alphen and then Ava Lechner. Yara Castellan and Alicia Maria Arzufi, not, both of those riders, not great starts here at the moment. No, not great, but uh, but this is this is one of those races where you you definitely either have it or you don't. <laughs> this isn't one where you get to <laughs> fake it, unfortunately. This isn't like a well, I could use a little bit of my experience and my finesse to be able to kind of come through and use that. It's uh it's just way too heavy and hard of a course. As you can see, these riders hitting that chicane. There's a big rut there. We have a problem there from Inger Vanderheide in the back part of your corner of your screen. But uh, Celine Del Carmen Alvarado feeling good coming off that training camp. She was down there with Sana Kant and a couple of the other women. Uh, doing a big training block uh, with some warm weather and it looks to be that the, uh, that has settled into the legs quite nicely. It has indeed and already a strong trio of riders just starting to get a bit of a gap as they go past the pits from Anna-Marie Hoyos back to Inga van der Heiden in the orange. It's already a little bit of a gap opening. There's your top 20. So Mount Captains, former winner of this race in 2017 as Lindy van Anroy in 21st. But uh, the Corridor Circus rider leading overall in the general classification ahead of Castline and Canvas. She's also leading in the under-23 classification ahead of Inga van der Heiden and Manon Backer. And taking that last round, Sanakant, Katie Compton and Caitlin Keogh was your top four in that one. Leading out here, so it's Alvarado, Camp, of first, Van der Heiden, Van Anroy, Backer, Van Loy, Anna Kay and Annick Van Alphen. That is your order through this uh, sand section. Just have a little glance back just to see Anna Kay just trying to get onto the back here of Ellen Van Loy with Van Alphen right behind her. D uh, the Polish fans, Barbara Borowicka, the Polish champion, Marion Norbert Riberola, a minute back there in 37. This is an essential skill, isn't it, Jeremy? These sort of courses, if you if you want to be a top pro, you've got to be able to, to learn to ride in the, the sand of Coxsider and the sand dunes here in Zonhoven. Absolutely, yeah. This is the uh, this is about the second half of the course, and this is a little bit different. This is a big 180 hairpin turn here, and that uh, it uh, notoriously has a very deep rut. The riders go up on the right hand side there, and you can see that there's some grass over there. The organizers let them use some grass. You can see some riders saying, "You know, what? I'm just going for it. I'm going to get off and run." But the sand must be riding pretty well today, as the riders have established a decent line on the outside make no mistake this is one of those ones that is very very difficult that line is so so narrow as you can
can see Anna Marie Wurst there having a tough time being able to get through there. I think that's Mount on back or trying to come through using that power um, to be able to come through. Some riders just getting off and running it, knowing, hey, I haven't been able to ride it in all of my pre ride. So, how am I going to ride it in my race when I don't have any blood in my arms? No, Anik van Alphen's riding it well. So is Alicia Maria Azufi, Yara Castelline, the European champion. Going well on the sand here as well. So is Lewis Sells. Back to the head of the race, though, Sana Kantz, as we, we said, 2012, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 18, the world of champion, as, as Jeremy and I both said, we can kind of feel that Sana Kant is just starting, will start to come into that form that we would expect from her. Inga van der Heiden, the world under 23 champion for CCC, they're just trying to close this gap back up now. So if you want a little shout out, say hi over on our chat forums on YouTube and on uh, Facebook. If you've got any questions for Jeremy, if they're race specific, I'll throw them in during the broadcast. If they're, if they're kind of generally questions, we'll try and take them at the end of the race today. So thanks to all of you for checking in. Just, just put your name and where you're watching us. We do like to build up a picture here on GCN Racing. Make sure you share it with your friends as well. Let them know um, that we're, we're live throughout the, the winter here on uh, YouTube and Facebook. Our trio are just about to get a bit of company now. The leading trio is about to become the leading quartet. Great uh, aerial shot that we have here. So going through the line, seven minutes and 19 seconds is your uh, lap time. And then six seconds back to Baka Van Anroy. Seven uh, to Van Anroy and Van Loy. Just one second between them. Azufi K. Uh, Van Alf and then Castelline just steadily closing this gap back up in 11th place and then low sells. That was a great chase there from Inga van der Heiden to put herself back into contention in this front group. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you can see that she's got the legs. She may have also had a nice training camp because uh, a lot of the riders, it depends on their style. You know, sometimes riders go away to training camp and it takes a bit for it to, I'll call it marinate and kind of settle in, you know. And uh, But other riders, they go down, they do some volume and immediately they get a charge from it. They feel like they've got the, you know, what they need back. As you can see, there's Bart Wellens on the side of the course, along with some of the other uh, team managers giving, uh, giving insight, telling where the gaps are and things like that. But it does look like these four front riders have had a, uh, have had a good couple of weeks here getting ready preparing for this um what's coming up marty is the christmas period you know and, and not too long a lot of the uh, a lot of the international riders are going to be coming into belgium and the netherlands and uh starting up the curse period which is uh for anyone that doesn't know it's a huge period of racing it's essentially a cyclocross stage race i believe there's maybe it's a uh, 10 to 14 days and there's a race just about every single day excluding christmas Shirin Van Anroy, number 34, the, the uh, junior rider, just trying to close down this gap. She's dragging that group of uh, Manonbaka, Van Loy, and Azufi, but Sonakant here again, masterclass from the world champion on uh, that descent. Look at the line uh, just carving through there from uh, Sonakant. Good to see Anna Marie Horst uh, going so well here um, on the sand. That was one thing that she said when you when you went out and spent the day with her that she felt she that was her weakness was was riding. I in the sand and that was one area that she really wanted to improve on this season yeah absolutely i think she had said that she was working with her with her coach and i think she was feeling like there was an opportunity to improve on something that she didn't feel was uh yeah on the same level as some of her other skills been able to get in there i'm sure having taken a, a good hard look at that in the preseason and learning some new skills and a lot of it comes down to to tire pressure you know a lot of it comes down to experience and, and position on the bike and a mindset you have to get into these races and riding in the mud or riding in the sand this is this is so much marty getting on getting off you know getting your kids back thinking about the line and shifting your body weight it's it's like taking a quiz and knowing how ooh, here we go we got yara castellan coming in a little off center you can see she's got quite a bit of speed here not looking happy with that uh oh not uh, not making that line perfect kind of outside all of those choices there marty that was one of those whew, sort of moments there wasn't it you could almost see it on her face that she <laughs> you could see that she felt she was starting to just go a little bit square to the left there and you can all she uh, Yara doesn't seem to, to hide much of what she's yeah. thinking uh, no, yeah, there I was think, definitely a whoops yeah. moment there yeah I think if you're uh, I think if you're on your brakes when you're going down the uh, the infamous drop there it's gonna be a uh, it's not it's not good you don't want to be on the brakes going down there momentum <laughs> 
and Nick Van Alphen remounts at the top of uh, that one. Uh, S just asking uh, Jeremy t tire tire selection tire pressures today. Um, what would you what would you be running in in conditions like this? Yeah, I think that the riders are definitely running probably uh, just under two bar would be my sense. Um, you know, for PSI, that's probably like somewhere between 17 to 20 would be my sense of it. As we see, uh, looks like potentially uh, Sonic Khan coming off that front group for a second. That may be a, a mistake. But yeah, I would say somewhere in that range, just because you want the soft tires to be able to move underneath you with the sand. As the sand moves, it, um, you know, you have to have a soft enough tire for it to also move. Whereas if your tires are too hard, then it's just going to be breaking through and kind of going down to the bottom and not giving you a big contact patch and not absorbing anything. So you you want to ride them soft with the tubular with the tubular tires. Um, you're able to you're able to run them so low that if you hit anything, you're not going to flat. So these riders have a ton of experience riding them. You have to ride the tire different when it's uh, such a low pressure. And you have to practice and practice. But you can see this course is really well ridden in. Uh, the designers and the organizers take a lot of pride in getting any big rocks or roots out of there. So the riders really don't you know, come into almost any rocks on tracks like these. They're very much um, sculpted, I would say, to be able to be uh, perfect for the cyclocross bike. And, and, yeah, and the riders know that. Santa Kant just trying to get back on to this group. He's leading a uh, trio, Inga van der Heiden, and Ari Worst. And Celine Del Carmen Alvarado, thanks uh, all of you for uh, checking in over on our uh, chat forums. So, so many of you out there, uh, Heide Pereira, Helder Pereira in Portugal. They got their Cyclocross Cup in uh, Portugal. Thanks for uh, checking in. Lap times generally based on the conditions. You can see lap two conditions. Again, Jeremy, they just change. Right, people asking lap times uh, in terms of the amount of laps that we ride. If it's really, really heavy out there, you'll do fewer laps because the lap times are taking longer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you kind of do a simple division, right? Like if it's, uh, you know, seven, <laughs> if it's seven minute lap, it's going to be X. If it's eight minute lap, it's going to be X. If it's nine, ten minutes. I mean, the laps are always different depending on the conditions. The, the organizers set the pace out and um, and then, or excuse me, set the course out and then the riders ride the pace given on the conditions on the day. So, yeah, if it's a very, very long, then maybe they would take a section of the course out potentially. But generally speaking, these courses run about seven to eight minutes and that's for, that's for television, that's for planning, that's so the riders have a sense of it's week in and week out. They know what to expect. And yeah, you memorize a certain bit of the track when it gets over 10 plus minutes. It's a, it's a bit of a different sport when the lap goes that long. So cyclocross is supposed to be a lot of rounds um, competed in, you know, 40 to 50 minutes for the women and just about 60 minutes for the men. And um, and that's good because the spectators and the fans, they come to enjoy uh, seeing the riders go by multiple times in a, in a small amount of time. Just to give you some weather for the riders today, the weather 50, 49, 52 degrees Fahrenheit, dropping to about 49 a bit later on. That's 11 degrees Celsius, dropping to about nine a little bit later. 31 kilometer an hour wind. So you can see the tapes really being buffeted uh, by the, the windy conditions out there. So uh, Alicia Maria Azufi, Manon Baca, Shirin Van Anroy. That next group, Sanakan, just battling to try and get back into this group. The world champion just kicking out of that turn. Alicia Maria uh, Zufi just comes out of that corner. The Italian, good ride today. So it's your, uh, man on back looking good. Castelline has got onto the back of that group. Uh, thanks for saying hi, Stuart Davis. The Welsh Cyclocross Championships taking place right now. Big shout out to you, Robert Raldi, uh, watching it in Ottawa and Canada. Roji Chu checking in from the Philippines. Andrew Matza from Ens uh, Ensign in California. Thanks, all of you for saying hi. Through at the end of the second lap, and it's uh, Salita Galman Alvarado, and when you're worst, Inga van der Heide and Sana Khan. Four laps to go this time, so four to go. Backer and Van Anroy feeling here. I feel that Backer and Van Anroy can, uh, with Azufi can get back in here. Absolutely. I mean, uh, there's no, yeah, absolutely. There's no question about it. These riders are, uh, have shown that they have the power, they have the ability. And so this is a unique track. And I think that, yeah, they don't probably, I mean, 
these riders are so young, especially Sheer Van Android. Like, how can how can you know? You know, how many times have you been able to race this race? I presume that this is one of the first. So, yeah, she probably doesn't even know what her strengths are yet on a track like this, and she's just using kind of uh, being green to it, as we would say in the states, and like, meaning being new to it, and just kind of going out there and flapping their wings. Again, we're seeing Art Wellens yelling to their riders to be able to uh, to take a different line or to think about something uh, that he's seeing out there as he kind of surveys the lay of the land today. Inga van der Heiden leading out for CCC Live. Celine Del Carmen Alvarado locked in for Corridan Circus on the wheel. Triple sevens. Anna Marie Worst is there. And then Sonicant just moves up as our Zufi and Castelline almost making contact. Van Anroy and Bakker are almost there as well. These gaps, we just got to uh, kick on here. Can Van Anroy get back in here? And on Bakker for our Expurser. Looking for a good day today for the Expurser team. Had a good podium yesterday. Looking along the bottom of your screen, Mount Captain still in the top 20. Low sales back in 18. Maestro in 21st. On to the descent. Sonicant just gets uh, just kicks out to the left there. Castelline goes down. You just saw again just losing that. Yeah, not good, not good. Definitely uh, not gonna not gonna bring a lot of confidence. She had just done a big effort to get back up there. Um, clearly, you can see the different styles in the riders, Marty, and how they feel comfortable or uncomfortable. When you look at Sana Kamp down and that's with many, many years of experience versus another rider that's right next to her, someone like Inga, Inga Vanderheiden, you can see that the style is completely different where Sana Kant's able to get wide, get low, push her bike away from her. She's able to almost she take a lot of time back. Someone like Inga Vanderheiden, of course, going down it safely and fine. Just not having that same level of experience and, um, and technical prowess as the world champ. Laura Vadon Scott just comes past there. This Yara Castelline just goes down. And again, this is the thing when you when you go down in the sand on a particular uh, part of the course, you go gear side down, not having a good day today. But this is all the, as you said, this is the experience, isn't it? You've got to learn to be able to to take the lines here. It's fine doing it in, on your on your course practices, but it's it's race conditions when you're chasing to get back on you're feeling the pressure you've got that european champions jersey on on your shoulders and there's that level of expectation that you're you're that you're feeling you're putting on yourself as well absolutely yeah i think there's so many things at play here and like i said marty this is not a course where anyone hides the strongest rider on this track wins without a question it's uh it's such a test of all of the parts of cyclocross that make it what it is i mean this run here you know as these Riders come into close to the halfway mark, 18 to 20 minutes in. This is one of the most challenging sections. You can see riders are barely running this because it is such an effort. You go down this, that that drop on the opposite side, you fly up that other section, you come off, you fly down that section, and within another 10 seconds, you're starting to do another 30 plus second run up that hill, and that hill is steep. <laughs> it's so steep. Tons of chicanes, meaning that there's a lot of uh, a lot of speed and momentum changes out there. There's all of these things to think about. This is this is like if you're taking your uh, your your hardest final exam. This is this is absolutely like that. Going through now this leading group. So triple seven. Can they get some reinforcements now at the front of this group? The chase here from the team one eight five rider. If you're asking over on the forums, how old is Sharon Van Anroy? She is 17, is Sharon Van Anroy, the uh, rider in the, the white and green jersey with my favorite sponsor, Sesamel, on her shoulders. She has had a great season. The Van Anroy sisters, her older sister is 23 and so far this season. So first in the European Junior Time Trial Championships, first in the National Championships in the Time Trial, silver at the Worlds in the Time Trial as well. So lots of talented uh, young juniors coming through the ranks there she is just chasing down Alicia Maria Azufi in front of her son account has faded I've given her the GCN curse today again haven't I after saying that I was expecting her to go well here hey well the thing is uh, like I said I think that uh, she is riding against riders that are 10 years younger than her in a lot of these uh, in a lot of these scenarios and she's got uh, she's got the world champ fans on there's nothing to say that uh, that she's not just kind of taking a uh, taking a moment I think that she definitely when I saw her running up that climb 
she did not look happy. She did not look like uh, she was going to come back from that and kind of have a uh, have a second go at this. It looks like kind of the, the top is off, and she's going to need to recover from the efforts that she did in the first 20 minutes. I feel like someone like Alvarado kind of pulls Kant out and like asks her, "Hey, can you put this? Can you put in a first hard lap?" Kant kind of takes the bait, and then she's out there racing a little bit higher than she needs to. I think that there's going to be her team is going to kind of analyze be and analyze her racing style and the things that she's going to need to do as she comes into the Christmas period off this big training block that she just finished up. She's a, uh, she's a rider that's been around for a very long time. She knows how to get the job done. I'm sure that she will, uh, I'm sure that she will be having her hands up in the future. And I, uh, I look forward to that. She's a, she's a, she's just a, she's a great rider to, to watch and to have seen do have so much success over these last few years. There's Sana Kat around that bottom corner into the pits. Just having a bit of a chat amongst themselves. Let's have a go, we'll go back here. And this is uh, Caitlin Cook from Estonia going down, uh, quite going down heavy there. That's not looks like oh. No, it looks a little bit like Oliver, who had the uh, sand in his mouth when we went over and saw the course. Didn't look like she had a good time, though. Her back a little bit, uh, a little bit kind of going in the wrong direction there. So definitely, probably want to head home and, and hit the massage table and make sure that you're. Uh, Iron at 100% for the weeks to come because that was not a fun crash that one. So if you're just tuning in today, welcome aboard. This is the round five of the Telenet Super Prestige Series from the epic sand dunes here of uh, Zonovin, the sand pit. As uh, the leading group go through the line, Annemarie Horst, it's Celine Del Carmen, Alvarado and Inga van der Heiden with uh, Alice Maria Azufi closing down the gap. Van Anroy in the fourth battle a fifth rather battling to try and get in to this leading group i love her style sheeran van anroy she's got that that gutsy uh, gutsy riding style yeah for sure absolutely it's, uh yeah it's a lot but as you can see alice maria arzufi making it up to that front group marty that is a big that's a lot. That means a lot right now for, um, yeah, for for the Scribble 17 because they're going to have two against one here. Anger van der Heiden definitely showing this is one of the better performances I've seen for this year. She's riding in the front group with the other, the other girls. She's the uh, current uh, under-23 women's world champ, so she's not able to wear those bands because Sana Kant's in the race, and she's um, she's the under-23 world champion, she's not the elite world champion. But Alicia Arzufi probably taking some pointers here from over the years. She's showing, hey, I'm here, and I'm, now I'm at the front and so Anna Marie works now plays the team at role but Celine doesn't want to let anybody go in between them to play any team tactics and give away any free time she puts herself right up in second place that's classic classic 101 road racing tactic but on the single cross course is uh it's good to make sure that you don't get tag team by uh by a one two punch from the seven 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 girls because they've shown that they can do it this season marty they have they do ride as a team i think that was what is interesting about your your piece with bart Vellens. if you haven't seen it uh, watch it it's a great piece out at uh, koppenberg in terms of different courses and when the team tactics actually actually play out yeah it's uh it is cool. I mean, I think that I think that one of the things that you don't see a lot in cycle cross is these uh, is these teams that can kind of work together and have a common goal. Um, you know, they they work together to have that uh, have that similarity and, and, and want the same outcome. But as soon as they get to that point where they're on their own, they kind of take it upon themselves to uh, to just race. You know, like head to head, right? They don't they don't. There is no uh, there's no friendship when they're on the front, and that's kind of how cycle cross has been raced since the beginning. I think that there's a, a collective goal to to get to the front to create some opportunities and then yeah once that's once that's done once a uh, attack is coming once they've whittled down the opponent then they fight the uh fight for the glory amongst themselves so see the riders going down the second half of the uh the infamous call here coming in now for this long run-up that i was talking about marty you can imagine at uh, 24 minutes of this race what this feels like in the riders legs Indeed, uh, back to the head of the race lap. Four of six, 24 minutes and uh, counting. Celine Del Carmen, Alvarado on the run up. Anna Rehorst just uh, locked in behind her. Alicia Maria Azufi just uh, finding the feet. And Inga van der Heiden, Sharon van Anroy chasing right into the bottom of this big sandy run up here. Thanks to uh, all of you for uh, getting on board. Mark Legg, uh, thanks for saying hi over on the YouTube forum. Tuck and roll. It is that, that there is there is a technique to trying to crash like this on, on some of these descents where it is a soft landing. I, I learned that very early on racing uh, from doing judo. 
uh, how to tuck and roll when you crash. <laughs> Yeah, a very important technique to have in all of cycling. If you're going to go down, doing it uh, gracefully is, is something to, uh, yeah, you have to learn how to do it. On the sand would probably be the best place on the cross course to do it, although the grass is not as hard as a, uh, as a pavement road. Here we see the uh, technique and determination that's on Sonicon's face as she gets on one of those outside lines. Yeah, just pushing that out. Oh, but you can see that the uh, fatigue is there in, uh, in Sonicon today. She's definitely feeling this one. As we get a picture of the man that we had on the show on Friday, Bart Wellens there, uh, all smiles as he has two riders uh, in the front group today. Uh, Selena Alvarado attacking this group again, and it's Anna Marie Hoyos from Triple Seven that's trying to stay with her. So these two are through these sections. You saw uh, Alicia Maria Azufi get onto the group, and uh, the uh, Corridor Circus rider Alvarado just bossed straight back, wasn't letting her get away with it. Now Azufi now is on the chase with Inga van der Heiden. So the group's just starting to stretch. Of course, he's locked in out right on the wheel now. Of Selena, Carmen Alvarado, Azufi just trying to find her way through. Azufi's again, we're seeing so far this season certain races not getting the best of starts and then having to use a huge amount of energy to get herself back up towards the front. Yeah, Bar, uh, Bar had said that, you know, technically she has some work to do, but that she's very gifted, uh, you know, cardiovascularly speaking. So she's very, very strong. And you can see that today she's not a, you know, didn't have the best start, but is able to make it back to the front group, which means that she's turned faster lap times than the other riders that are at the front, probably, you know, having an open track, not, you know, playing to the race tactics that are out of hand. But overall, she's been able to come, you know, be able to come, uh, been able to come back to the front group. And that is... I mean, on a, on, against the best riders in the world, that's that's a win in itself, Marty. It is indeed. So, worst on the front. Right, little message to Fonz over on our chat forum who posts 50 million times every broadcast in the pronunciation of Adam Reed's worst name. At least he stopped shouting now. Uh, Fonz, we do our best. Jeremy and I both have regional accents as well. Worst, as Anna Marie said in her video with Jeremy, has an H in pronunciation in the middle. So we do our best as always. We're not native speakers of the Dutch and the Flemish. We always try, but Fonz, you can, you can write 50 million times on the chat for the same message every single time or we can sit back and watch and enjoy some fantastic cyclocross racing so uh, we do our best and apologies if my pronunciation of first with my Scottish Hampshire accent is uh, is seriously offensive <laughs> I apologize we have some fantastic cross we have some great chat going on thanks all of you for all your input your leading group is back together and of course Celine Del Carmen Alvarado Alicia Maria Zufi and Inga van der Heiden, triple seven, two riders represented here at the front, CCC Live in the orange of Inga van der Heiden is onto the back of this group. Again, van der Heiden not, we would say, far away from that big breakthrough elite victory as well. Just trying to carry on from, Anna, uh, from Mariana Voss yesterday, who really uh, announced her return to the cyclocross uh, scene yesterday. And we've, we've missed her and uh, Inga van der Heiden. Said the world under 23 champion. This group's looking good. Yeah, it is as they come down this kind of flowy, fast section, which brings them back to the start finish area where all the big tents are and all of uh, a lot of the fans are sitting. If they're not in the uh, in that infamous um, sand drop, then they're here on this back side of the course because this is where a lot of the big tents are. The food vendors and such are all over here with the beer and everything. So they're coming back into this as they're going to lap through that second half of the course, Marty. It's real, real fast. It's got a lot of flow downhill, fast sand. It's a uh, sloping downhill, as you can see. Sonicon not on the uh, not not on the pedals here, just having to kind of take through these sections. Now these riders coming through the start finish area, which is a big concrete pad that um, that I don't know if is just made there for the race, but. It is, um, it is definitely a big part of this course, and it kind of lives there year-round. When we were there, obviously there was nothing, but this concrete pad, you can start to kind of see the lay of the land as we see Sheeran Van Andrey coming in, trying to get through this lap, um, just to hang on. If it's not out of sight, it's not out of mind, Marty. Not at all, and Yara Castellan is just five seconds off the group here, so she is almost back on. Almost seems like Yara's just settling in, just finding her groove now as, as the laps go on. Yeah, it's a, uh, 
Yeah, I think that any uh, you can see uh, Arzufi here using this power section again to her advantage, just kind of stringing it out. She's taking a dig at it, maybe setting up something for Ana Marie to be able to kind of come come and take a swipe at uh, at Alvarado. Alvarado has been sh showing that she's got great legs. They were just on a training camp with her, so they're probably taking insights from how what how was she riding on the climbs when we were doing the intervals? How was she was she just a little bit in front with the wheel when we were doing that four hour ride, or was she did she have to eat a lot? Did she not look good? Was her mental you know what, what what were they seeing so these riders they know each other so well they know everything about one another on and off the course they travel together they're on the scene together they know literally every little cough sneeze look <laughs> it doesn't matter they have checked these riders out up and down so they know everything as we come in here to the infamous drop and you see Alice Arzupi now look at the different styles of these riders you see Anna Marie taking that low line having a crisscross through coming over and uh, Alvarado with that clean run down the hill. So definitely a lot of different styles in that party. She has had it smashed, doesn't she, from the start, that line, Alvarado. She's been nailing it every single time on that descent. Yara Castellani, the European champion, is only almost back on. Really gets the power through that section, stays on the bike a little bit longer than the other riders across this uh, top section here. Alvarado leading out. This for Van der Heiden and Alvarado. If Castellani gets back on here, that makes it three triple seven riders at the front. Yeah, that's for sure. That is for sure. Now the whole team's up in the front <laughs> almost. Casterline with a huge effort to be able to come back from that crash earlier in the sand. And um, yeah, kind of put it all together to be able to bring this thing back is an impressive effort on the day. Definitely not, not a problem with the legs. I think technically would be where you see the issue. But this section here, as you see now, Alice, probably Arzufi, with a little bit of a crisscross here on the line choice, you see Anna Marie getting away from her, cutting over to that far right side to be able to get past her to kind of keep a little bit more speed. You can see that uh, Arzufi was on the brakes a little bit. That's just the speed that she's comfortable with right now. She's, yeah. I think that's not her strength on the course. She's looking at that and saying like, I need to get through this section. This isn't my strength. But as we come into the last lap there, Marty, that is going to be one of the sections where someone like Alvarado and Anna Marie, where they've had a lot of success on it, are going to have to try to open up some gaps. On that long run up, you can see riders descending one side. Sana Kant uh, here, the world champion. It's not going to be uh, a sixth victory in this one. Sharon Van Anroy right behind her, the, uh, the young uh, rider, Dutch rider. And uh, just uh, was asking, one of you was asking, is it legal to grab on to the barriers? Yeah, it is. You've got to use, got to use everything, haven't you, to be able to get up these sections. Absolutely, yeah. I think it's uh, that is the least of the promoters' worries when they're looking at a track like this. I'm sure they have a lot of insurance and a lot of different things to cover them. But uh, the riders grabbing onto those little things to be able to keep a little bit of uh, a little bit of their balance as they clean up that. You guys probably can't uh, fathom the steepness and the, the difficulty of that climb. But I can tell you that if you were putting it on a 10 scale, I would put it right up near 10. I mean, it's very very challenging it's very steep and like i said earlier cardiovascularly speaking the ass is at a 10. it is one of the hardest things to be able to navigate this course and then to be able to kind of go through that section run up it get back on your bike and still continue to like see straight this is this is a course that demands everything you must get as well massive spikes of adrenaline on those on those descents as well because the close-ups when they really zoom in on the rider's face when they're kind of doing that phew, kind of moments there must be a real big spike of adrenaline as well. well you can never rest you can never rest mentally or physically on a track like this you think that you're in a good line you think you're in a good line and then all of a sudden you pop out of that rut and now you're careening towards whatever you know object is under there that you haven't seen before so you kind of shift your weight and then as soon as you lose something just naturally your body tenses up when your body's tense that's not a good position to be in because it's you know it's bracing for an impact or a fall that's just what happens that's how our, that's how the body works so i think when you see the riders faces that's what you're seeing you're seeing that tightening up of the muscles because it's preparing for a crash a good rider knows breathe get it get the bike away from you get nice low and loose and um and uh try to just let it let it flow on the sand Big respect there to Caitlin Cook that we saw from the Cannibal team, the Estonian rider. She, she was the rider that went down really heavily, got a mouthful of sand, and she's she's still there. She's just been lapped by our re leading group, but you've got to give some big respect to her for, for getting up and, and carrying on there. 
Yeah, never give up. Never give up. That's a uh, that's a beautiful thing. As she rides this line, she sees the girl in front of her doing it. She gets out of the way immediately as a good throw for Yarcast line to be able to take a clean run at it. As you see Arzufi here uh, having to get off and run the section, making Inga Vanderheiden also have to get off, just giving Anna Marie worse. And Aline Del Carmen Alvarado a little bit of a gift here with, uh, with some extra time. Now they're seeing a bit of lap traffic, which is making it a little bit difficult, but as a, as a front rider, that is uh, somewhat expected on a course that is so difficult. So if you see other riders that we haven't been calling coming into the shot, then you know that that's a lap rider. Here we see Sonicon using that experience and skill to be able to come up with this very narrow side of the track that riders are riding all day and breaking and half down. Fabian Kiftmuller was the Swiss rider from VC Milan that's just on the back of this leading group. So Linda Carmen Alvarado having a little glance back. She'll get pulled by the officials. So we're on lap five of six here in uh, Zulmhoven in the Telenet Supresti series. And we first actually Del Carmen Alvarado just have a little glance to their right. They'll see Alicia Maria Azufi and Inga van der Heiden with Yara Castellan almost back on. This is going to be an exciting uh, finish. These two riders, we've seen them doing battle throughout this season so far. Our Zufi, can she get back on? Castelline comes past Van der Heiden, chasing down her teammate just in front of her. One lap to go. It's Bell lap for a leading duo. One to go. What's the gap? Our Zufi and Castelline. Can Castelline be the, uh, the difference to maybe get our Zufi back on? But it's six and seven seconds. Uh, that starts to, when you start to get out to that six seven seconds gap on on this sort of course with one lap to go winner could come from those two leaders did you say yeah i would say so i mean i think that the thing that you got to put together is these sections as you as you uh, as you think about it going down the the big sand drop into that next section just the ask to be able to kind of tighten up a six second gap that you've got then to be able to take it back in the last lap when these riders uh, in the front Celine del carmen alvarado and Anna marie of course are all going as hard as they can to be able to close that down would be a herculean effort and i think that right now these two riders uh, is potentially where the win's going to come from although I never say never, Marty Yard, Castelline, and Alicia Arzufi are riding super strong today. So uh, Inger van der Heiden going to be trying to get on the podium, although with three triple seven riders around, it's it's going to be tough and slim pickings. There is indeed. Alvarado on the front first is, oh, could it come down to a sprint between these two? Could it come down to that long, sandy, steep drop that both of these, I'd say both of these riders have looked good on that sand descent, but I'd say so far in this race, Alvarado has had the edge. I would say so, Marty. And I think that Alvarado is going to try to get to the front here would be my prediction. She's going to try to take this section from the lead. But you see Anna Marie knowing that's where Alvarado is strong. And Anna Marie sends it, pushing the pace, <laughs> going through there, knowing that Alvarado is strong in that. And this is where the gaps are going to start to form, Marty. Now they're going to come up to this next sand section. Boom, we see these beautiful aerial overhead shots. So what Anna Marie is doing right now is actually limiting Celine Del Carmen. Alvarado's uh, opportunity to attack and to take time, and um, that is that is definitely a, a uh, showing a lot of a lot of time in the game, being able to kind of take Celine Del Carmen Alvarado and, um, and and push her back by taking the front there through that section. Yara Castelline climbing well on that section onto the descent, and Anna Marie Hurst is uh, really attacking this descent. The experience of uh, Hurst. Former under 23 world champion, could we potentially see her take that jersey from uh, Sonakant in the uh, world championships? I wouldn't bet against it, actually, would you? <laughs> no, no. And without a jersey right now, with Yara Castellan taking the European's jersey and uh, Anna Marie Wurst, the way that she had set her season up, you know, her goal for the year was to win a World Cup. She's done that already twice. She's um, she's definitely looking to add today's result to her Palmares. It's uh, it's cool to see her taking the front and taking control of this when you saw. I was expecting, personally, Alvarado to try to get past her, but Anna Marie really sent it there. And that's something that you have to calculate as a rider, taking that risk knowing that there's a possibility that you may crash, putting it all out there, and then you achieve something really bit beautiful from that because that's what you have to do as a top-level cyclocrosser. When you're riding against someone that's at the exact same level as you week in and week out, it's about pushing the boundaries. And like I said, Marty, they know everything about each other. So being able to kind of trick them to think that, oh, you know, Celine Del Carmen Alvarado is thinking, oh, 
Anna Marie's not going to go down this section that fast. I'm going to go to the outside. But then she's like, whoa, Anna Marie smashed it through there. Now she's got to, now she's got to kind of uh, re reconfigure her plan of attack. But now you can see they're both in the front of the saddle. They're going as hard as they can. And they're absolutely pushing the pace now as, as, as much and bending the tape as much as they possibly can on this one. This is the last lap, worst on the front. Celine Del Carmen Alvarado right on the wheel, that flowing section through there. Horst is uh, dictating the pace here. You can just see that just outside that top 10. Ava Lechner, Anna Kay, Annick Van Alphen, Karen Verheestrat, and Mount Captains in 16th, 247, separating those uh, riders along the bottom of your screen. Yara Castelline, last, just one last ditch effort here. As a uh, Zufi, can the uh, witch of one of the triple seven riders will uh, make it onto the podium? Your first two look like they're going to come from this leading duo here of Alvarado and Worst. It's the European champion right behind, and they're just picking up Absolutely. some back markers again. Absolutely, I was just looking at uh, I was just looking at uh, Anna Marie's result from here last year, ninth place. So she's going to be happy with this. This is definitely a much better performance for her than uh, than last year's race here. As we see, uh, Alice Arzufi and Yara Castellan trying to take up uh, third and fourth spot. That's going to be a good battle fight to the end. Um, but definitely looking like they're going to have two triple seven riders on the uh, on the podium today. They are indeed, so these two uh, chasers behind. Looking good now, Ayara Castellan's going to put in a bit of a dig here to go past her teammate. That's uh, Barbara Borowicka, the Polish uh, national champion there in the white. She's a lapped rider. So they put them in just, uh, oh, they're caught together. So they've uh, come and just run into the back of each other. Just a fractions of a second lost there. Might that allow Yara Castellan and Arzufi to come back? Quite a lot of traffic. You don't see this very often, Jeremy. You you don't see this very often, but on a track like this, there's a there is a lot of fatigue that happens from lap to lap, and over the course of this race, you can see them. They'll be giving they'll be giving way. You see, they've seen. Oh my gosh, I'm in the front of the race now, so they're trying to get out of the way. They're just doing their race; it's not their fault. But you can see, you don't want to see it impact the race. You saw a very professional, um, very professional move there. Anna Marie getting caught up with Celine Del Carmen Alvarado as she looked like she had a hard time in that 180. You never want to see that um, dictate the race. You see Alvarado there putting down the pace saying hey i've got i've got an opportunity here but anna marie coming back it looks marty like it could be a uh, a sprint finish i have to say that 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 section of the 180 was very reminiscent of a matthew vanderpool and wout van Aert, um, a tangle up where the uh, where the skewer gets stuck in the rear tire um and uh we saw that in uh, at the worlds in uh in zolder a couple years back alvarado worst castellan is uh, trying to come back to these uh, two riders as well last lap charge here from the european champion and when he first getting caught up in that traffic has found her way back to the front you saw her really having to uh, push the limit on uh, this one kicking it out of that corner is Yara Castellan has a glance back to see where her teammate is at, uh, Alicia Maria Azufi looks like she got caught up a little bit in that traffic as well uh, Alvarado back to the front these two riders just swing it backwards and forwards now they line up for the sprint and when he first goes down the left Alvarado it's gonna be close it's gonna be neck and neck but Anna when he first comes through to take it for triple seven. It's a victory. Wow. Second place for Celine Del Carmen Alvarado. There's our Zufi just coming out of that corner. It's going to be first and third for triple seven. Yara Castelline crossing the line for third. Oh, man, what a race we had there, Marty. After all the drama in that 180, we're seeing now Alice Maria Arzufi coming through there. What a day of racing, man. That was insane, that last lap with all the lap traffic, the 180 hang up, then Alvarado getting a bit of a gap, even though she was probably thinking like, wait, hang on, did I, something happen? What, <laughs> you know, trying to make it fourth. <laughs> And then turn out, out but Anna I was wondering if that was by design that she wanted to be in second place up there to be able to come off of the all project after having 70 years. Sana Kant 
comes in there for sixth place. So the former, the winner, as we said, 2012, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 18. Here comes uh, Sharon Van Anroy, the uh, team 185 rider, the junior. He's just a glance back here. Manon Backer is chasing down Sharon Van Anroy. She is going to take seventh. Another solid top 10 place today for Van Anroy. A real star in the uh, ascendancy. And uh, congratulations all around. And you can just see the uh, Azufi. They're just you, you, picking the race apart afterwards straight away. Yeah, absolutely. It, uh, it's nice to see so much camaraderie amongst the riders, uh, especially on the women's side. They, they give hugs, they're pumped, they're happy for each other's accomplishments. It's, yeah, that's nice. That's nice to see. I think, uh, I think it's totally different in fact today. So, uh, so different when I was when I was over there in the early 2000s. I would never have seen a uh, Norwell race for Eric Rebecca hugging out that race. So here we go. A replay of the finish. You see it was uh, Steve El Carmen Alvarado leaning it out, pushing, punching on the pedal. It was Ben Marie Worst able to come off her rear wheel side by side, head to head, print finish the winners. We don't forget every time, Marty, if you, John Hoven has come become infamous for these duels. Fast, tight finish at the end. Man, today was so different. What a beautiful finish to an excellent day of racing. That was absolutely phenomenal from start to finish. Yara Castellan really had to fight today, didn't she? Look at that, just blowing out her cheeks there. Here comes Anna Kay. It's going to be 13th for Anna Kay from Exposa. And then uh, next rider to come in will be Anik Van Alphen. So we'll give you that. So that's your top 10 as Annick Van Alphen comes in. It's uh, Anna Uyghurs from uh, Celine Del Carmen Alvarado, Yara Castellan, Elicia Maria, Zufi Ingevan, Heine and Sana Kant, uh, Shirin Van Anroy, Manon Baca, Laura Vadonjgot, Ellen Van Loy is a 10th. That's your top 10 across the line. A absolutely uh, phenomenal race. So these, uh, the top 10, just outside there, Ava Hirtohuka, 11th, Ava Lechner, then uh, Anna Kay, and uh, Annick uh, Van Alphen, that's uh, Karen Verhey Straten, just uh, comes in ahead of uh, Mount Captains, it looks like, yep, Mount Captains from Pals Sousen uh, Bingo. He's so going to come in just ahead of Lindy Van Anroy, so the older sister of uh, Shirin Van Anroy. So the two riders from Team 185, a good day out. So uh, 18 and 23 are uh, these uh, two riders. What a phenomenal race. Uh, let's have a little look back through the highlights. Some great slow-mos uh, here. Between Anna Marie Hoyas, look at the uh, the light. You can really see the wheels here, can't you, Jeremy? Of uh, Alvarado just carving through that sand. Yeah, man, they were going for it. This is that last lap, that duel. That man, she just sent it. I had to say that that was the fastest that we had seen them go down. That um, they both ripped it, and that was uh, that was something to see, man. That was uh, that was that was the best in the world, putting it all on display as we see here, Alvarado on her number two bike just working through this uh, working through this super technical track here in Zonhoven. she's an absolute phenomenon isn't she i think we've we've got to try we, a lot of uh, people asking if we can get a feature with her or an interview with her i know we're trying aren't we to try and, and get something up because she's one of those riders that's kind of come on over the last couple of years and we just want to kind of get to know her a little bit more yeah here we go we've got the uh, the highlights of the women's race as you can see was Inga van der Heiden taking the start out, having a great race today. And then shortly after that, a, uh, a, a Celine Del Carmen Alvarado, very motivated, taking a huge gap on that first lap, Marty, just flying through. Sana Kant was chasing her like crazy, using all of those years of experience to be able to get right back up to Alvarado's uh, first lap blitz on that downhill sand section. At the end of that first lap, you can see that the gap's already open. This is, again, when you look at where... Alicia Maria Azufi came from. That was Yara Castellan going down. Seeing the way their race panned out, how far back Azufi was, that tumble there for Castellan. Big respect for them for, for coming back in the way that they did. 
Absolutely, yeah. And then it was the uh, it was the chasers that were able to make their ways back up to the front. You see Inge Vanderheide and they're looking back, just seeing what's the damage that they've done. But it was Alice Maria Arzufi coming back up to the front group, and then Yara Castellan after having a really tough first half of the race, able to make it back to the front using the power in her legs. It was Anna Marie Worst though, and Celine Del Carmen Alvarado riding the sections cleaner than just about everybody today. Kind of one for one. Can that, can I do this? Then can you match me? I'm going to do this. Can you match? that and they were just going back and forth having their own little game of bike out there but uh, in the race today so Celine Del Carmen Alvarado the winner of Heaton the winner in the Rue de Vorde, has to settle for second place today and already worst has had a phenomenal season into this home straight and it just leads out so many epic battles we've had over the years here on that spread but uh, Anna Rijuas punching the air with uh, delight as uh, she comes in to take the win it's a first and third for the triple seven team Alvarado there in uh, second place we said it was going to be epic and that's what we got it was absolutely epic man it was so cool to be able to watch that and um to call it live i i love this race after having been able to go over there with oliver um if you guys haven't seen that video it was a feature that we did about the zonhoven and all of the history and how hard it is oliver's a a uh, you know, not an experienced cyclocross rider, if at all. He's never ridden anything like that before. He gets over there and he just had a mouthful of sand, but he learned a lot. He was able to conquer it and um, and have a good day out there. So I have a ton of respect for this course. It's one that um, that I, I wish I was able to have raced, but it's beautiful to be able to call it too. <laughs> Looking at that podium, standout performances today. Again, Sharon Van Anroy up there in that top 10. If you're not familiar with how things work here on GCN Racing, we have a little bit of a halftime show. Jeremy and I will be back on a uh, the t 10 to the hour. So you have about 20 minutes till that with the men's race starts on the hour. So we're about th just under 30 minutes away from that. We have a little bit of halftime entertainment. The video that Jeremy was talking about when he took Ollie out on the sand dunes of uh, Zonhoven and a little bit about our podcast. We'll be back in a little while. Enjoy our halftime. Just how good are the world's best cross riders? And how difficult is it to ride a pro cyclocross course? Well, I've come to the capital of cross, Belgium to find out firsthand with the help of GCN's resident cross guru, Jeremy Powers. But first, uh, allow me to just give you some context as to, as to my cross background, or lack of it. I'm an experienced road cyclist. I've clocked up thousands of hours road riding in all conditions. I've done road races and somehow I've even managed to win a few. However, I've never done a cross race. In fact, I know absolutely nothing about cross. I'm a total noob. So when our resident cross Jedi master, Jeremy Powers, invited me along to have a go at riding the Zonovan course in Belgium, Belgium being the cross capital of the world, I thought, why not? Let's give it a go. How hard could it actually be? It's just like riding around in a field and Belgium's like flat. Plus, Powers told me that there's gonna be frites, waffles, chocolate and beer. <laughs> I'm mainly here for that. Firstly, to the uninitiated, Zonhova, Belgium is home to one of the rounds of the Super Prestige Cyclocross Series, which is like the Formula One of cyclocross, where the best riders in the world compete. Matthew Vanderpool, Sana Kant, and Zonhoven happens to be one of the most challenging tracks on the circuit, period. The riders have to tackle super steep banks filled with sand and ruts and getting off and on their bike, it is a very, as the Belgians would say, heavy track. And the best thing about this <laughs> is that Oliver has no idea how hard this is. Which is kind of cool though, because, well, as a novice, hopefully it will give you an idea of how challenging it is, and through his hardship, hopefully you guys can learn something. So where's this course we're riding then, Jeremy? See that clearing right there? Yeah. Right up here. All right. The f is that?
What the f is that? That's the coal, man. The coal of Zanhover. Human beings ride down this. We are going to be riding down this. <laughs> oh, God. All right, Ollie, so this is the cull of Zahnhova, and basically everything down there where, we're, where you come in, that's like the VIP, all the pits, everything like that, down in that area, in that big field. You fly up here, you shoot down. This is the infamous drop, that big, all the pictures are right here with all the people all lined along the side of it. The course goes right down here like this. Boom, big effort, Hercules effort, up to the top there, into that upper section, you drop back down, so you go down that second side of the sand pit where you see those lines, and then you have to run up this side. It's back down there into some other stuff, but this is the heart of Zahnhova. I just can't believe that human beings actually ride down that. <laughs> You're gonna be one of those human beings, buddy. <laughs> All right, I'll give it a go, but I think I'm gonna die. <laughs> Dude, you're not, you're not gonna die. It's sand, it's soft. You gotta keep your weight back, you gotta keep your head up, you gotta look at the rut. You'll be fine. <laughs> look at the rut. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Dude, oh, you're gonna be fine. Let's go. Look at the rut. <laughs> weight back. I can't, I can't believe how difficult this is. <laughs> it's like, hard. I, I feel like Bambi on ice. I, I, riding in this deep sand is like nothing I've ridden on before. And it's just, I think it's really hard to stay in those ruts or whatever you call them and yeah. like stay upright. I, yeah. I really find it hard. Everyone has to start somewhere, man. And I'm gonna, I'll give you some tips and you'll be flying down this thing like you're Matthew Vanderpoel, <laughs> zipping through, <laughs> dropping so. down. It's gonna be good. I'm gonna teach you some tips, and I think that everybody else that's just getting going in something like this might find it useful too. Right, time for a, a masterclass. So this is what I'm thinking. You, first of all, need to get your tire pressure down. You probably, what do you think you have in there? 50 pounds or something like that? About, about 90 PSI. Okay, yeah, that's that's too much. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get Why down. Why didn't you tell me that before? <laughs> we just, we had to come in here like a beginner, because you are, you're a beginner. You've never done this before. <laughs> right, cool 20. Then. 20, 20, 22, something like that. Let's bring him down. All right. All right, and the second thing that you want to do when you come into something like this, because you come into it like this, you got to think about what gear you're going to be in, right? You don't want to be in your easiest gear, like flopping all over the place, because you won't even make it past this first section to get to the downhill. So you got to be in like a pretty good size gear, a bigger gear to get some amount of like traction and not too high of a cadence. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If you're in too high of a cadence, you're going to be like left and right, left and right. So you want to be in like a mid-range gear here to get the momentum and then you want to get the bike away from you as far as you can. Push it out in front of you. Get it away. Now you got to pick your head up. A lot of riders, first thing they do wrong, they're looking right here at the, like where they're trying to go, trying to follow the thing like that. It's a bad look. Why? Because weight's all over the front of this and that's the wrong place to be. You want to get your weight as far back like a like you're a mountain biker, like you've got like, like you're like way over the back of the bike, you've got it way out in front of you, and that way all of your weight is on the back and it's very light on the front tire. So your front tire is just kind of going into the rut, it's finding its way on its own. As soon as you put weight on the front tire, that's when it digs in, and that, unfortunately, as you found out, it's when you go over the bars. Still got sand in my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> When you're going down this and there's the ruts in the sand, you're telling me to try and stay in the ruts. But what if, if I come out of a rut or I don't make it into the rut I'm trying to get into, is, is that game over then? Am I going to <laughs> stack it? Probably not. And if you do, it's just, it's going to be nice and soft. Like the sand is, it's fluffy. It feels, it's, like, it's like jumping on a bed. It'll be fine. So, so the other thing I'm wondering, mm -hmm. what's the deal with braking? Like, is, is, what's the technique? Are you supposed to br use your brakes when you go down this? It's not one size fits all, right? Like it's personal preference, but I would say no. <laughs> because you, yeah, you don't wanna lose momentum typically in the sand. You wanna carry your momentum. I mean, you, 
genuinely have to commit to the rut. So when Matty Vanderpool rides down here, does he break? I don't think he is. <laughs> I don't think he is, no. No, uh, no breaks on this for the pros, for sure. I mean, this is all about just sending it. I think if they're in an oh no situation, then maybe there's a bit of a break grab, but I'd have to review the tape, but my general sense is no breaks. All right, Ollie, remember, kind of mid-gear range. Keep pedaling, get your weight on the back of the seat, pick your head up, look up, look up, hit it, get your weight back. Okay, now off, now way behind the bars, way back, way back, get your weight back. Yeah, weight back. Woo! Yeah, good job, man. Good. Let's, yeah, let's see your carrying technique. Ugh. Oh, no. How's this? No. I look pro, right? No. Oh, God. Oh. I'm going really fast as well. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh, mate, this is well steep. There we go. Oh. Uh, I'm going to show you how to carry a bike, too. Yeah? Yeah. Oh. I thought this was, like, legit. That is, like, um... Yeah, that's like you killed something in the woods, like a deer, <laughs> and you're like carrying it out of the woods. It's, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that's even Ugh. better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly how they do it. <laughs> Vanderpool should be taking notes. <laughs> I might have created like a new way of doing it. Okay, here, I'm gonna show you real quick. You grab it here, right hand here. Yeah. Just hoist it up. Okay, put it up there. Yep, oh, get it through. Yep. Now hand here. Hand here. Yeah. Get let, let go. I go. Goes underneath there. Yeah. And then it goes there. On well, that. Yeah. It's exact. There you go. Now yeah. you are a good pro cross rider. Like this. Yeah, exactly. Don't let me see that other Hercules stuff again. Okay. <laughs> okay, that was good. High five. High five. You did a good job. You ripped down that. We gotta put it together though, man. This yeah. is one of four parts to conquer the goal. Okay. You gotta go down this. Then we gotta go up that hard section. Yeah. Back down this other steep one, and then we gotta run up here, remount, and get back on the bike. Okay. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. I don't know how to do the remount. Uh, we're gonna work on that. What did you think of this? It's knackering. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard, isn't it? Yeah, really hard. Yeah, like when you watch it, at least when I've seen it on TV, because I've never been here actually, but when I now have come down this like this, and then I've seen this section where like someone like Vanderpoel is able to ride it, but he decides to get off and run. That's what I was talking to you about with the momentum. Like your ability to carry your speed up it and jump off and run is oftentimes faster in cyclocross. Like if you have to do 10 huge, 30 cadence drills up this thing in the middle of a race like you already know how hard that is yeah and you know how hard this is and then if you just throw in like a weight session here with your legs to get up this versus just jumping off and hopping back on with it being faster you can see how a section like this it in cyclocross land it's it's a lot smarter yeah saves your energy saves those big efforts for when you actually need them So you can see the difficulty in this after you fly down the big descent. You gotta get off and run up that. Then you gotta do a huge effort here, hit this rut perfectly, which drops you out to that insanely steep run. Yeah. Oh, God. Cardiovascularly, <laughs> it is such an ass. It is incredibly, I can't believe how tough it is. It is like doing just the hardest interval session you've ever done, but then also the, the technical skill is, is just blowing my mind. <laughs> like, oh, it's for someone like me, it's really, really difficult. But it is fun. It is fun, but yeah. I think for everybody it's difficult. That's the truth, is that it's not easy, even for the pros. This is like one of the most challenging, you know, finesse, technique needed tracks that exist. Nice. So this is the second sand drop in the Zonhoven Kull. 
And uh, this one's got a little bit of an arc to it. So you're gonna need to lean the bike a little bit. You can't turn the front tire. If you turn the front tire with your weight up front, remember what I said? Straight over the bars. Yeah. So you've gotta lean the bike over and keep momentum. So through here, you actually wanna be kinda of like pedaling with your weight back to about here, and then you just wanna get the bike out in front of you. And I know, I know what you're thinking when you look at this. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking it looks really hard. It's like, that one was hard. But this one now, I've gotta kind of go turn through this big deep rut. <laughs> you're gonna be great. Are you ready to try it? I'll give it a go. <laughs> This is the final part of the goal. Now, for this, you need to get off the bike and you need to be running with it before you lose momentum, right? Just like that one. That one's a little different. This one has some grass running, so it makes it a little better. But this thing is so steep. Yeah. It's terribly steep. It is. <laughs> you wanna look for the holes that are already there from the riders in front of you. And we've yeah. done this a couple of times, so there's already some holes. And you wanna put your feet in those. You don't wanna be breaking a new path in this. You want to use the ones that are already matted down because that's going to make like it's little stairs there. Like Look. little cow hooves. <laughs> like the what? cows have followed the other cows. The, it, okay. <laughs> Do cows even follow I other don't, cows? I, well, if you say so. But I think um, any, well, anyone who's watched GCN videos in the past and seen me running will know that I'm really good at running. Yeah. So this bit's probably the bit where I'm going to do, do really well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, especially if you're carrying the bike the way you've been carrying it the last couple of times. Yeah, well, watch and learn, powers. <laughs> <laughs> Dismount, now start running with the bike. Now pick it up on the down tube and find some other holes to get. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Where have the cows been? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they're over here. Oh. God. <laughs> Bloody hell. <sighs> well, I hope you've enjoyed watching me fall off, but if you'd like to see it done properly, then you can do, because we're gonna have coverage of the Super Prestige Cyclocross races over on the GCN Racing YouTube channel. It's free to subscribe and watch it, so head on over. Everyone got like, they were like a, a whole bunch of excited little puppies. They were like, ah, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go. And it was like, they were burning matches and using power beans to like left, right and center. <laughs> and then you I, one of those things and everyone will love it as a pro rider. I think you called it about 45 seconds before it happened. He came into a section, you were like, ah, he looks frustrated. I think he's gonna go now. And it was down onto, down onto the water side, it was like, Bang, you know, it was, it was awesome. You know that kind of guy that every time you go to the race, you see him and you're like, hey, how's it going? How are you? I'm sure if you race, then you have one person or a couple people like that that you really look forward to chatting with. That for me was Simon's honor. As a matter of fact, all of the Swiss riders, I truly enjoyed getting to know. What I really learned, and when they say you learn a lot of stuff for your life in, in sports, what I really learned is like you, yeah, maybe you'd be for, for one and two days, but then you try to get out of it and then dig yourself out of the hole. Yeah, and, and, and show what you're really capable of. If one of your kids wants to be a pro cyclocross racer, are you gonna uh, green light that for them? Are they gonna be able to, uh, to be a pro cross rider, whether it's one of your sons or daughters? Yeah, sure, they have every support from us. I think also from talking for my wife here. I think you, you learn so much in sport that I wouldn't say, no, this is too dangerous or this is too, too whatever, uh, the races are too far away or, or something. So they would have every support of, of me. And uh, when I'm not riding bikes, I really love on like working on bikes and uh, cleaning them, tuning them. So uh, if I could do that for, for my four kids, I'm not running out of work anytime soon. <laughs> so <laughs> that would be good. I, I think you'd be a busy guy.
Welcome back. We are not far away now. Just about 10 minutes from the start of the elite men's race here in the Telenet Super Prestige Series from Zon Hoven. If you don't want to know the results or anything to do with the women's race, you can press mute and look away now. Uh, Jeremy, what a race. Let's have a look back at the highlights. It, get, it was an absolutely phenomenal race yet again. Yeah, it was a super day of racing. It was, uh, if you didn't check in with us, it was absolutely part of bar at the beginning. It was a lot of riders up in the front group, probably five. Uh, but in the end, it came down to uh, these riders that we're seeing here. It was uh, Alvarado there giving a hug to the victor, Anna Marie Worth. Yara Castellan able to come back from a really half hard first half of the race to be able to take the uh, take third place on the podium, putting two triple seven dot BE riders up on the podium today. As you see, Alvarado really wanting to take the victory here today but unfortunately losing to Anna Marie Worth that's going to give Anna Marie Worth a lot of confidence as they head into the curse period but also to the world championships indeed and she's at the top out uh, Selena Carmen Alvarado at the top of the leaderboard in both the under 23 and the elite classification so even though she would have been disappointed with the, with the second place today she's had two victories already in the season she's been super consistent and that's what you've got to be throughout the year in order to take that series overall that's right. Yeah. And this series uh, has, yeah, a lot of prize money for the women's side. It's been, um, it's definitely a big series for the professional women. They want to win this series. There's a lot of money and of course, a lot of prestige <laughs> to be able to uh, win the super prestige overall. It is one of the classics of Belgium, the GVA, uh, the, the DVV, excuse me. Um, the, uh, that's what they used to call it. The GVA, <laughs> the DVV trophy, um, as well as the super prestige in the world cup are the three biggest series in cyclocross. So being able to be at the top of the leader board in one of these that's a big one now if you haven't been with us so far for the telenet super prestige series before we get into zonhoven today let's remind ourselves of the series so far <laughs> It's been a great series so far. Elisabeth Tone Arts and Matthew Vanderpool have been the winner. So we'll clear one thing up before we get started today. Matthew Vanderpool not on the start today. Matthew Vanderpool not racing uh, today. We should put a little uh, scrolling graphic al along the bottom of our uh, our screen on that one. Let's have a look at the Super Prestige standings. So Tone Arts leading at the uh, in this series. And he has 45 points. Uh, it's tight at the top. They're level on points here, Jeremy. Yes, they got Lauren Swick coming in, also tied with Tune Ertz. Uh, Quinton Hermans there in third place, the winner yesterday in Essen. If you didn't watch that race, a great race. Corne Van Kessel, uh, 40, 43 points. Uh, Lars Vanderhaar in fifth. Ely Easterbeet, Tom Pidcock, the the Brit taking uh, taking seventh place so far overall. Uh, Jens Adams, Tim Merlier, and uh, and Yanni Vermeersch in the top ten. So definitely uh, really good to see Pidcock up there in the top ten for the for the uh, for the British fans. It's, I think that's that's great. You know, he's coming into the season kind of slow, but he's still in the hunt for these. He's been having a great year so far, third place in the podium. I think today this could be something for him, especially with the absence of Vanderpool. A lot of riders probably licking their chops thinking about today as a big win to be able to put on their um, to be able to put on their Palmares. 
Yeah, if you look at the under-23 competition overall, Tom Pidcock leading from Ben Turner and Ryan uh, Camp. That's the uh, the top three in the under-23 standings. Matthew Vanderpool has won this race for the last three years, so it means that someone else can put their name at the top of, of what is a really, really historic part of cyclocross, this, this race. Man. Yeah, this is just such a – this is just one of the ones that you would love. This is like getting at the Koppenberg is being able to bring home a cobble. Being able to win Zonhova is uh, is huge. And I think all these riders are thinking about this opportunity with Vanderpool probably a way out of training camp. A couple of riders are going to be absent. I believe Michael Van Tornhal also has said in the press earlier this week that he's not going to be here as well to kind of take this opportunity to do some big miles and get ready for the Christmas period and the final part of the season. Um, you, these riders, they have to take breaks. They, they are not machines, right? These are these – are, uh, uh, well-tuned uh, cyclists that need to take breaks and, and use periodization to be able to come in at their top. And I think Vanderpool probably feeling like he's been challenged a lot in these, in these races recently, needs to put a little bit more on top. So it opens the door for Tune Ertz and Lawrence Swick and, um, and riders like this, maybe even a, um, maybe even something for Tom Mayusen today. Could be indeed. Now, in terms of for our for our viewers that are watching, you've you've been as a pro, you've been in here in in Europe. Unfortunately, you were telling me it's not one that you were able to do because it just sat the wrong time with the U.S. Nationals. But for a lot of riders, getting to this point in the season when you've come out of what may have been a, a heavy road program or a mountain bike program, is this the point in that that winter we talk about periodization of training where you really start to feel gassed? But good racing, short, intense race is you know over the course of a weekend you cannot you can in a way can you almost become sort of detrained from an endurance point of view you know, I think that each of the riders, depending on which countries they're from, have different things that they face. For me, it was always about having to fly back and forth from the United States to Europe and mitigate that travel pain and like the days off from having to be in the airplane to go back and forth to kind of meet those schedules. I know um, I know that some riders, especially like Katie Compton and Caitlin Keogh, are facing that this year. I think that Mark Legg was on there right now. They're home. They're in the United States watching. They're mitigating. They travel. They're coming in early, having to take time to be able to take a break, to be able to get ready for the national championships and then fly back over riders from europe they face a different thing they have a heavier race schedule and they have bad weather so they have to fly down to spain somewhere to be able to get these miles in and they have to kind of take it gingerly i would say the first half of the year to be able to uh to be able to be prepared to do a really heavy period like this and then an even heavier period during the christmas block these races are short but they're very very intense meaning you can stack them but they will slowly but surely kind of pick their way away at your form and you have to rebuild the short intense efforts that's great, but you need the efficiency of the long days on the bike to be able to get back to 100% of your uh, capability. Looking at the women's race from a technical perspective, what are you looking at today in terms of the of tire choice today and tire pressures? Yeah, uh, the tire pressure is a big question about a course like this. It's similar to uh, to Coxida or to these other races that are very uh, heavy in the sand department. I think that you'll probably want to have like, you know, probably I was saying in the, in the women's race, probably something like 17 to 20 PSI, just under two bar. Something like that would be good for this. The, I was saying that the organizers really take time to be able to take out any big rocks or stumps or things like that that would hit the riders' tires and give them a flat. Running these tubular tires also really – just makes it a lot nicer to run the lower pressures. Okay, we're going to go down to the start. Don't forget, subscribe to GCN Racing. We'd really appreciate it if you could. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell icon. Give our live broadcast a thumbs up as well if you're watching. We really appreciate that. Subscribing and hitting that bell icon just means that you'll get notified just before we go live or we upload a new video. And, uh, yeah, the more subscribers we get, the more live cyclocross and live racing we'll be able to bring you. So if you could uh, subscribe, we would really appreciate it right down on the start line now and uh, getting ready for the off riders a little bit further down the group let's run you through some of your riders that you are going to be watching today so tone arts lawrence wake lars van der haar kimpton hermans corny van kessel gianni vermish ellie isabet all here uh tom mayusen Yes, uh, Jeremy Mashin, Zdenek, Stibar is wearing 34, uh, Tom Pidcock is 41, Ben Tullet is wearing 48, uh, Jakob uh, Doragoni from uh, the Cell Italia Guerciotti team for our Italian viewers. We've got uh, Tetsuki Kaji, uh, 
from Japan. We've got Cameron Mason from Trinity Racing, number 68. Uh, Tom Rossion, uh, the French rider, also in there as well. So your front row starts. You can see here, Marcel Meissen. We saw him out warming up a little bit earlier on as well. The German champion. That's a good start position for Meissen. That you can see just on that second row. Joris Neuvenhaus from Team Sunweb. He's got a second row start. Tom Pidcock right in uh, behind him as well. Watch the lights. We are almost ready for the off here. Tonarts, those Belgian champions, Oakleys. Look at that. So the, the countdown. We are ready to go. And we are away. Lars van der Hart, Janni Vermeersch, Meissen on the right, trying to get a good start here. Pidcock locked in right on the wheel there of Corny van Kessel. Let's get on to the grass now. Left-hand turn, a little foot out there for some of the riders on the inside. Meissen has slipped back just a touch there from that uh, fast start. Tom Robert there, a French rider, and uh, leading out Eli Isovitz, Tonarts for Telenet Bauer's Lions. They've all, uh, they seem that they've got a good start here, the Telenet Bauer's riders, the Belgian champion uh, leading out here. So there's a good start here from uh, Tonarts. Definitely, yeah, probably also having uh, gotten in some miles down and uh, some better weather and yeah, this is definitely a race that he's going to be thinking about. You know, it's a, it's a good track for him. Quentin Harmons yesterday taking the win in Nest, and I think he's going to be really motivated and have a lot of, uh, you know, have a lot of confidence coming into a track like this. Again, without Vanderpool dictating the pace, these riders know that there's a small lull that can happen. They know that they have to watch out for Easter Beat. They know they have to watch out for the week. But I think that there is a, uh, there's a lot of riders that could potentially win this track. I look at like, you know, plant as we see them in this downhill stand section, in this downhill of the fall of Ronhova, it is a uh, 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 Just picking that up there, so at the top of that, Laurent's uh, Swake. We're having a bit of audio issues with uh, Jeremy's uh, audio. Apologies uh, for that. We'll sort that one out. Jelenic Stibar just going through a picture. I know a lot of... Uh, you big fans of Jadenek Stibar. Xavier Van der Poel, good start from him. Tom Pidcock, you can see there the British champion in that white jersey has got a good start here for Trinity Racing. Loris uh, Aruya onto the run up. And Hermans uh, Swake just over the, uh, goes to the right. You can see the deep sand dune uh, run up here. This uh, group still uh, on this opening lap. Very much together, Stibar. Can Jadenek Stibar, you can see him pounding up there, real powerhouse. Jadenek Stibar just making up some places. The De Kernick quick step man, you can see Cameron Mason as well, just a little bit further down there for British fans on that uh, run up. There's a replay of the start. Marcel Meissen, Dan uh, Suter, Jens Adams also on that second uh, row. Stan Godry, there's a little uh, onboard camera it looks like we've got here from the start. Nope, one of our cameramen just running with the, with the riders. Quentin Hermans leading out here from uh, Lawrence Wake and uh, Tone Arts. Lap one, thanks for getting on board. Herman's great ride yesterday. He was on phenomenal form yesterday. It was uh, Quentin Herman's. And Jadenek Stibar just finishing just outside of the top 10 yesterday for the uh, De Kernick Quick Step team. Returning to Cyclocross. It would be great to see him back and gradually uh, climbing up through the rankings as well. On to that group. Riders just trying to move up. Jens Adams just moves around the outside. The Hermans, Swake, Art, David van der Poel. Here's your next rider going through. Ellie Isabitz, Corny van Kessel, Tom uh, Pidcock. So he's a bit there. And the Pau Sausen bingo team. Got plenty of uh, riders represented at the front here. 
Then a little gap back to the group. Lars van der Haar, Yanni Vermeersch. Vermeersch. Tom Meosen just on the back of that little group there. Swake concentrating on uh, this descent. Look around the bottom of your screen there. Godry, Van der Bosch are still within the uh, top 30. Ryan Cortians. So Jeremy is uh, back with us. Laurence uh, Swake. He was uh, second in the last round behind... Uh, Matthew Van der Poel sits level on points with uh, Tone Arts, second because of uh, positioning. Pidcock just dives out there and uh, tries to uh, move up on uh, this climb. That's uh, our Italian rider, Jakob Dorogoni. Probably a little bit further back than he would want to be. Stibar dives to the left there. Shedenek Stibar. It's great to see him back in cross. It is awesome to see him back in cyclocross. Yesterday he was out in uh, his local one in Essen. Uh, so yeah, I know that's where he set, decides to call home. So as you can see these long shots of the rider, someone like Joris Neuvenhaus having a really tough start today, uh, really far back, really, really far back. So yeah, it's been great to uh, to see though Stebar come out, kind of make this part of his preseason uh, training regimen for the uh, for the road season. As we see now, the front of the race, Lawrence Sweet, Tuner, it's Quinton Hermans, front of affairs with Ely Easterby right back there, and David Van Der Poel just behind. Or indeed, Ryan Camp and uh, Van der Bosch getting a good start as well. And the, uh, those two riders, the end of lap one, a good uh, size leading group that we've got here. Camp and, uh, just trying to move up. A glance back now to the chasing groups here. So just outside. So Dan Suter, Lars van der Haar, Yanni Vermeer, Jens Adams, Ria and uh, Mayusen, Pim Ronha, Marcel Meissen, Stephen Valters, Jakob Dorogoni, the Italian rider, 19th, 18 seconds down. Mike van der, van der Heiden also up there as well. It's a decent size uh, leading group, which is, uh, which is great. Great to see. We have seen quite a lot of uh, really nice uh, bunched racing over the last uh, few weeks. Yeah, we have, and I think uh, I think one of the things that I'm most interested in right now is just the just the kind of the sitting up there on the first lap. I think that these riders don't maybe know how to race such a big race like this one um, with uh, without Vanderpool there. You know, this is this is absolutely one of the classics of the circuit. Vanderpool's not there, and he has these riders have an opportunity, and so you can see that the pace just lulled a little bit on that first lap, which is something that doesn't traditionally happen when Vanderpool is in the race, or even Wout Van Aert. The pace stays very high. These riders uh, know that there's an opportunity. They want to be able to bring everything that they can into the last uh, half of this race. And so definitely checking up on people's form after a quick first lap, but sitting up on that start finish straight said something to me, Martin. Phenomenal descent. Lars van der Haar just getting uh, themselves through here, but it's Tonarts that leads through with Corny Van Kessel. A little bit of a dab there from uh, Eli Isabit, just ahead of David van der Poel. Gianni Vermeersch is there as well. But it's, uh, it's the Belgian champion leading uh, over the top section and on to the next sandy descent. Yeah, this is that second half of the, the pole there. They come up that section, then they fly down this second half, and now it's this big, huge run-up, a big 30-second sand climb. All the fans are out. You can see how deep they are packing the track all throughout the sides of this course, Marty. They're, they're, this, course is, this course is quite big when you think about the layout of a cyclocross course. This is sort of one sector. Then there's the back sector where that big 180 is where we saw in the women's race. The riders got hung up. Um, uh, Anna Marie Wurst and Alvarado got there. Uh, had problems with the running into the back of each other and then there's that start finish area which is that third sector so a lot of different areas in this a lot of different line choices and things to be able to look at when you're uh, when you're thinking about the Zonhova track aerial shot on the run up there's Dargoni in that yellow Neuvenhaus right behind him 
Stiebar just trying to uh, move up because uh, Stiebar is here. That's why they're concentrating on their cameras go back, which means that we do see an awful lot more of the race. A little slow-mo here of Tonarts as he just controls and carries that speed, carving through the sand here for Tonarts. Yeah, it's like driving a boat, isn't it? You just got to <laughs> kind of get back and let it fly. But you see, Ertz looks to me on a good day today, having some miles in his legs. Looks like he's absolutely on fire as he drills it through this section, going back through the pits again. It's a, uh, this is a very unique track. And it takes, I think, I think it takes a rider that has done it at least once to be able to have success here. I can't imagine that you just rock up to this race, having not have seen it and then having a lot of success. And I think you need to have watched it on TV, have studied it and know it's in and outs and, and how it can bite because this is one of those ones that if you just get a little bit off kilter if you're going too fast in one section you can hit the deck hard what sort of rider does this sort of course suit because when i was chat chatting with erwin rebecca about it he, he said he, he felt that he was too heavy for a race like this does does, does being light suit you on these sand dunes or, or where do you where, where ideally where where do you want to be well, I think you have to have quick feet, which was something that, truthfully, Erwin had. He had very fast, big, long stride as a very tall rider. So that would uh, that would be similar to Tunert. I think that, truthfully, their riding style is similar. There's a lot of similarities as he rails that 180 section, hits that corner up on the right-hand side. There's only one little line there on the grass, and then he's going to be trying to sneak through and take that little line that everyone's ridden over the women's race. Boom. Then he goes wide to try to make this turn. As he comes up to the top, you see him just really meticulously picking these lines in that first lap and making making it look easy when it's it's anything but as you see the best riders in the world struggling with it but i do think that someone that has that uh, that explosivity the ability to kind of push up push a hard gear for a bit but then get off run boom 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 off the bike bike back down and then getting it right back up to speed and then technical prowess so again being confident on the bike and making sure like i said it's like taking a test hitting the line the same line on a course like this lap after lap perfectly executing it's the way that you can have success and win on a track phenomenal lines the belgian champion tonarts the winner in boom he took that ahead of Putin Hermans and Pit Dock he glanced to his right just to see what sort of damage that he's doing to the group behind him he missed the boat a little bit yesterday when this man here Putin Hermans went on the attack Van Kessel has a glance Tom Pitcock the British champion well in there and then, then there's a, just a small little grab here from David van der Poel. It's a good opportunity here for riders when they get this section. Everyone just has a little glance to see what sort of gaps they're doing as Tonarts comes through here at the end of lap two. 11.48 and it's a four second advantage back to Swaik as uh, Corny van Kessel just has a little glance to uh, Elite East a bit. Pidcock going through at 11 seconds. Eight laps to go this time. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice, this is a nice race. I think we've seen, you know, Ertz is uh, is taking the initiative early on, but Sweek is is there. And Sweek has been able to show that he's come on late in the races, which is also a strength of Toon Ertz. So it uh, will be great to see these two battle at the front as they kind of show their face. They put stick their head in the wind. It's Toon Ertz again right now, taking the initiative, trying to sort of nail this course in. And these riders, Marty, will gain confidence from hitting these sections clean, lap after lap. They'll be like, okay, I'm good here. I'm good there. They feel like they're in the flow. They're not being challenged for the line. There's not four or five other riders kind of trying to jump past them and get away. Their back feels good in the heavy sand, getting on and off the bike. They woke up, the legs feel good. So you can see that in the way that Ertz is riding right now. He's up out of the saddle, feeling confident on today's track as we sort of chases him down as he lurks in the background. And Sweet has had a good season. It's along the bottom of your screen. So Mayusen, Huautas, Pim Ronha, Ronha. Joris Neubenhaus went through the line in 18th as uh, Tonarts again just nails that descent as uh, Swaik almost back on to the Belgian champion. Stibar is sitting in 21st just ahead of Ben Tullet at 102 for the Brits. Dan Godry at to, to in 24th. 
Brandon Bosch in toward, uh, 25th, just ahead of Ryan Cautions as Pidcock just gets on to the back of Corny Van Kessel here. So the gap still uh, fairly small. Welcome. It's lap three of ten. If you're just joining our broadcast today, welcome to GCN Racing. Live coverage today of round five of the Telenet Super Prestige Series from Zonhoven. The big sand pit and it is delivering again. Great racing. Ryan Camp just uh, takes that right hand uh, turn at the top of uh, that section this front group can they get these two chasing in the gap behind can they uh, just get back on here and make this a six rider leading group yeah and they're going all out up that super steep very difficult climb just grabbing the barrier there there's a rope there that the riders are able to and you can see that between the rope and there there's a barrier to keep the fans just a little bit further away so that they're not touching you can see a couple of photographers tucked in there grabbing some good shots hopefully not interfering with any of the riders but you can see i think it looks like it's to be bill and havis that's there taking some shots i think we got a nice picture of him but here we are tune air riding this downhill section with a lot of confidence marty you can see that he's on his a game today he's very focus but he's nailing it meaning like he's not touching the brakes he looks like he's in control and he's he's tackling these with ease today he is indeed and sweet uh, herman's not far away so sixth kevin kessel van der Haar, uh, david van der Poel are still in the top 10 and van den bosch in ninth just ahead of jens adams that group's just switching backwards and forwards as the pal south and bingo rider just gets back on ellie Isabet is uh, battling to try and stay with uh, quentin herman's here it could be two from Telenet Barwas lines at the front and two from Powershausen being goal. Then a little gap back to Pidcock and Van Kessel for you British fans out there. Herrmann's uh, using that power to just try and ride back on to the group. It's only a few weeks left here for Quinton Herrmann's before he moves to, to pass just new in a new team. That's right, yeah, he'll be making the switch over to a new program where he's able to combine the cross with the road with the Wanty Gobert team. And um, yeah, he's going to be riding under Hans Van Kasteren, which is one of his old team managers, the previous owner of the Fidea Telenet Lions. Before it was called that, it was just called the Fidea team. And that was where Quentin Hermans got his start with Hans Van Kasteren. He's a big player in the game in cyclocross. So yeah, he's excited to go back there and he'll take Corny Van Kessel with him as well from the, uh, from the Telenet Balawaza team over to that new program. So exciting times for Quinton Hermans. He's had his best season to date so far with the elites. Tonart leading out. Good question over on the forum is uh, from Dave Edwards. Is Tonart riding a dropper post or is it just the bike color scheme? I think it's the way that the uh, the seat post extension fits onto the onto the Trek bike here. Yes, I believe so. I do not. Although I, <clears throat> I mean, I'm open for everything. But seeing Tonart riding a dropper post, uh, that would that would blow my head off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As we see them now, this is that fast part of the course, Marty. We see he, Tunert's taking a look back. This is the area where there's not a lot of fans. This is what I call that like that third sector before you come into the start finish, but that line right there, you'd be surprised. It's downhill and it's a little bit off camber. So you actually, you don't just turn there. You really have to lean the bike over. It's so fast and there's a good rut there, but you have to, when we say commit to the rut, that's exactly that turn where you have to do that. If you're not in the rut, it's very, like a lot slower and it's more dangerous because there's nothing for the tires to grip onto. The rut allows you to lean the bike over and to carry your speed and your momentum. As you see on almost all these turns, there's one or two ruts that are essential to be able to get around this track with ease and super fast. As those riders get on, it's a perfect opportunity for these chasers to try and get back into this group. It's the Belgian champion leading from uh, Swake as they come off the drop there, drops down onto this kind of concrete tape tarmac section, big blocks that make up this road at the end of lap three. So a leading group look like they're about to get some company. Easterbit and Pidcock are just four seconds down corny van kessel he's just like Lars van der haar just tucking down time trial style onto the uh, the bars on this section and then a 
little uh, gap back to the group being led by Jens Adams with David uh, van der Poort, then Toon van, Toon van der Bosch and Yanni Vermeersch, and then Dan uh, Suter, rank number 11 here for Pals Sals and Bingo. So this front group is about to swell in numbers uh, to five. Pitcock and Isabit are almost onto the back. Pitcock is uh, almost there now. He's into the slipstream. Beautiful uh, shot there as they just get on. And this is Michael uh, uh, Dietrich uh, from the USA uh, going down. Big Mike Dietrich over there in the sand of Belgium and taking a <laughs> taking one for the team. It's good to see Dietrich out there, uh, a, a friend for many years. Good to see. I, uh, I had heard that he was over there, but I didn't see his name on the start list. So he looks like he did register and uh, and made his way over. He said he was going to try to take some laps, see how well he could do, see if he could finish up on the first lap. And if not, he was going to grab a beer and some fritz and, uh, and enjoy <laughs> himself and take in a little bit of Zonhoven. So good on him for getting out there. I hope. I like to think he was inspired by the GCA video of, uh, of Zonho. I hope so. He put it gear side <laughs> down there as well. I just saw that sand just <laughs> piling onto his uh, piling onto his drivetrain there, didn't it? They could set the gears. And uh, I'm sure his mechanic's going to be happy about that one. Swake though attacking <laughs> this uh, climb as they go through that section. As you see, though, Pidcock now and Corne Van Kessel kind of rounding out, just kept tacking on to this front group here of this these three riders up front, which is Lawrence Swake, Toon Eretz, and uh, Quinton Hermans. Now, I was going to say, Marty, as you hear these, hear these riders come into the call, they're going to have a lot of motivation to be able to go super fast through this with all of the fans cheering. If you can hear that section, if you guys listen on the next lap, you'll hear the fans roaring as these riders come through. Belgian fans typically aren't big cheers, but when there's a race like this, with such a tight, compact group, they do they do start to cheer a little bit. But you see here on the side, they're very tame. They're not yelling like in a typical in a typical American or, or different countries cross. You'd see them hanging over the tape, but they wait. It's at the end of the race when there's the real battles going down that they'll start to clap and they'll really start to cheer. But they're watching. In they're, they're very much uh, they're very much. I would say they're more laid back than some of the other international fans that we see sometimes out on the circuit. Tom Pidcock just grabbing a little bit of air through that section, just uh, on that uh, descent for Trinity Racing. There's Stiebar, the aerial shot here, just showing Stiebar on the, that descent. Last count, he was just outside the top 20, the De Kernick quick step man. The lead just swapping backwards and forwards uh, out of this group. There's a bit of a gap back now again as they uh, get uh, onto that uh, group. Lap four of uh, ten, ten laps in total. We are racing four today. Another little replay. As, uh, ooh, going down there. Oof. Was so that, uh, was that one of the British ben riders? Tullet. Yeah, Ben Tullet yes, was that about was. to say. Ooh. Poor Ben Tullet going it is down there. Yep, that is a tough one. That section will get you. Even um, you know the the, the uh, difficulty of the track uh, combined with um, combined with the high heart rate. You know all of this stuff trying to navigate these super technical sections. You miss one little thing. You have one small lapse in judgment or concentration, and then it's over the bars. And as you can tell here, a lot of people leaving with a, a mouthful of sand. It kind of that stuff can just buck you, Marty. And uh, and, and there's nowhere to go but down. Ben Tullet, British Junior, has uh, taken a little bit of a tumble. Back down, back to three leaders, just over to uh, coming up for 22 minutes of racing uh, so far. This group, we could uh, Corny Van Kessel, Pitcock, and Issa bit with Lars van der Haar chasing down behind. Vonier and uh, is the right just rounding out the top ten, just ahead of Van der Bosch and Suter. There's confirmation on your screen of the head of the race. That's your chasers, rather. Ryan Camp at 49 seconds, having a good day today. Ryan Camp and Tone van der Bosch, both young riders having a good day. That's right, and as we see them coming to this 180 section, a little bit of lap traffic there, but they're coming in and they're hitting it with ease. They go up onto that right-hander, a little bit of grass right there that they're able to hit, and now it's all about concentration and being able to ride this one line. They have to shoot over to the other side of the course as the line moves them there, be able to get around a loose section that's too steep for their bikes to fit through so that they can make the turn there and go up onto this last third part of the track as we see now. It's Corne Van Kessel, Tom Pidcock, Ely Easterby, and Lars Vanderhaar all in the chase now you can see the riders with the with the skin suits unzipped quite in stark contrast to last year i was re-watching last year we had snow on the ground last year 
Hey, yeah, it's uh, it is definitely. When I was over there, it was also very uh, seasonable conditions. It rained just about every other day, but for that time, they had a beautiful sunny day, just like this when we were over there with Ollie looking at the sand pit. So definitely a uh, definitely a nice time as we see the team owner of the uh, Powell Sazan Bingol Jurgen Metherpitten there is uh, taking a look to see how his rider Lawrence Sweet is going to end up here today. Good question from Giovanni Spinotti over on the YouTube forum just to asking Jeremy in terms of, he said, is it true that they use talc instead of oil to move the chain for, for sandy course? It's quite a different setup, isn't it? I mean, I think a lot of the riders probably are able to use uh, different things. I, I know that in, in, in the past we used very light, if any, uh, chain loop on our chain. So we'd clean the tra chain and then it was almost just metal on metal. Um, you definitely don't want a wet lube on a course like this. If you can imagine like a, a tar and feather type scenario where you, you've got a very wet um, chain with a lot of oil on it going through the sand, it's going to make the gears super heavy. So that's not what the riders want. I think um, I don't know about running talc on them or running some type of powder. Um, I have heard that before, but I've never actually seen it in practice. I think um, I think truthfully, a lot of compressed air just blowing out the chain, getting it super dry before the race, and then letting these riders kind of go to work with it. The uh, like I said, a lot of these components now with metal on metal, they're able to shift just fine. It's not ideal or optimal, but this is the professional level, and these riders are able to uh, to um, to kind of burn through this equipment and throw it out when it's over. So we're seeing now the uh, young. British rider Tom Pitcock taking the front of the race and drilling it through the section but Toon Ertz not wanting to let him take that as they go into this hairpin 180 coming up it's uh, Toon Ertz that takes back over the lead because he is feeling very confident on the uh, famous Zahnhoven Cole. The Belgian champion just overtaking the British champion through that section, but Pitcock's trying to battle back here as Quentin Hermans moves up. Uh, Tonarts didn't want the, the British rider to take the front there, wants to dictate the pace. There's your group, Pitcock, Van Kessel, Swaik, Arts, Hermans, Isabet, and Lars van der Haar has uh, made it in here as well today. Lars van der Haar is on a, on a good day today. Hey, that's what I'm saying, man. He's out there. It's awesome to see. Tunert riding this thing with confidence. Pitcock, no, not surprising, going a little close to the uh, little close to the uh, inflatable KBC barrier there. That is the uh, Belgian bank. That's their logo there on the side. But Tunert decides to almost ride the entire section, tries to bring it through, maybe to try to create a little bit of attack. But Pitcock's able to get by as that uh, lack of judgment there from Tunert to try to ride that section full through. And uh, now it's Pitcock back in the front. When you're a rider, Marty, and you take the front of a uh, classic like this, at the age of Pitcock being able to come into this, you can see how fast and how he's hitting that rut. And that lower section where I'm talking about, you can see the riders are really getting like thrown around there because the, the course, it, it's it's the same for everyone. But the bottom half of that sand is really up and down, and it throws the riders for a loop. You see Pitcock's got the jersey wide open. He's feeling good. He's trying to get a little bit more airflow through there. But it's got to be very, very motivating. And... Um, um, and energizing to hit the front of this race and to have the fans cheering for you like this. There's a few co co comments as well saying Tom Pitcock thinking it's summer. It, it is a British summer. It's like nine degrees out there. It's nine degrees Celsius. It is a British <laughs> summer. You got to you got to hey. agree with that, haven't you? Tom, the skin suit unzipped all the way. I'm Scottish. I know how what I, you know. Don't let the accent fool you. We know when it's summer. This is like height of summer. Always an entertainer showing a little skin, but you can see here how fast he goes down this. Just watch the body language on this one, Marty. He's all over the machine. Boom, boom, boom. Those big drops. Not taking it clean. That's not the line he's going to take next time, but you can see everybody having to fight that same track and that same line that's in there. 20 years old, Tom Pidcock. And uh, you can see the battle, the confidence that's starting to starting to come back now at elite level. It's so much success as a junior and an under-23, but it's different, isn't it, when you get into the elite racing. And Kurt Bogards, his uh, team manager, was saying he's been they've been working a lot with him sort of psychologically over the last weeks. So you've just got to develop sort of mentally that strength, haven't you, when you step up to, to elite level? Absolutely, and like I said, he's a rider that is not uh, is not afraid of being able to put himself out there and ride from the front. He also has a lot of confidence. He's been world champion multiple times. He has a lot of he has a lot of confidence. He has a huge engine. That's not no one's debating that. He's the current national champion of of uh, Great Britain, not under 23. No, he's the elite national champion, and uh, you can see that the legs are turning over just fine today. He's kind of gotten the cobwebs out. We're halfway into this race now, Marty. So that gives me a sense that he's here to stay. I mean. As when you're young, sometimes you can go out hard and you can blow up and then you can 
fate. But if we're halfway through this race and now he's decided to hit the front after he's got this course nailed in and now he's starting to take a dig and really push the pace, that tells me a different story for today. Is this one of those courses where you've got to ride it like this? Just ride the, as we always say, ride the course. Just concentrate on the course, hit the front, pick your own lines, not be dictated to by anyone else. Well, you can see there, maybe a little bit, maybe took on a little bit of water by putting that attack out. Now that is exactly what I was going to say to your answer. So ride the course, but you can see Pitcock went a little bit deep, went a little too hard, and now having to run this entire section, giving two air to huge opportunity to take away and now you're seeing that Quentin Hermann is saying I need to get past Pitcock and now Sweek saying the same they've kind of closed up they uh, they had the gap the group all together but now Tuner is the biggest benefactor of um, of Pitcock going through that turn and making a mistake you can see Marty a big gap now just from one small error one small miscalculation of how hard he was going makes the error and now a big gap and you see that one minute error one, we always say, don't we, in Cross, when we're, we're here and we're calling these races, the minutest of error can hand some of the biggest of gaps. That's right, and you can see now Quentin Hermans sitting up there a little bit, giving, this is what I was talking about with the team tactics, Quentin's not necessarily going to not pedal, but he's also taking the front, and he's not pushing the pace, right? So no one else is, you know, Pitcock would be the typical person that would chase that down, or Sweet, but Sweet had to get around Pitcock, wasn't able to, kind of got caught up in all that, and Ertz knows that the pressure's on now. So Ertz is now, given this opportunity with Quentin Hermann sort of, I would say, not going as hard as he can, is able to take something out. But I expect we'll see a new chaser. Here it is, Lauren Sweet on the front, taking up the uh, chasing duties, knowing that the race is going up the road. He's going to try to put in a big dig. He's uh, he's definitely going to be worried about the damage that's been done in this last uh, last one minute of the race. So they had to they, that little 180, that big dig uh, section, and it handed a 15 second advantage now to turn arts this is at this point with five to go this is when we normally if, if tone arts is on the back foot and chasing this is when we we always see him do the the, the tone arts burn this is what this is the effort that we we see him make again and again and again and and how quickly this opening up that a, a 15 second advantage i do see lawrence sweet being able to close this back down marty I think that I think that Sweet knows that he needs to do a good lap here, and the pressure's on. But I do see him with the way that we've seen him ride. He's been able to match Vanderpool. He's been, I think, in a head-to-head. -head, if we put Tune Air and Lawrence Sweet head-to-head -head for the season, I think Lawrence Sweet would be a little bit out top, not saying anything against Ertz. I just think that that's the way the cards have fallen this year. I do think we'll see Sweet be able to bring this gap back down, but closing down 15 seconds, no matter what way you cut the pie, that's a huge gap. And it's going to be a big app to have to go in there and throw that ball in the fire. As we see Kuhn Ertz here not deciding to ride this section again, knowing last lap, not fast. He's got this opportunity. He cannot mess it up if he wants to take the win here today. Donuts gets uh, through that section. A huge roar went up. Uh, as he went through that section, Pau Sals and Bingo got to do some teamwork here, combined with Tom Pidcock to try and uh, get the Telenet Bawas Lions back under control. Those three yeah, I Telenet don't think Bawas riders are uh, in the group. I don't think that they're going to be letting Pidcock ride the front in that 180 section again after that. That was one of those things that's uh, next next year you can try again because that just that kind of changed the outcome of the race. Just one small error, and that's the type of thing where you you have to put a lot of trust into your um, into your the, the people that you're racing with. Like I'm going to let this person get in here, and that's the respect that Pitcock has because of his because of all of his uh, results and the, the the accolades that he has as a racer. Someone like Sweet, someone like Hermans is going to say, hey, I trust that he'll be able to go through this and navigate this section. But that's what cyclocross is. When someone makes an error, you have to pounce. You have to capitalize from it. As we see Tuner's going wild into this, almost <laughs> in a wheelie with that bike out so far in front of him like he's uh, Nino Schurter ripping this descent on a mountain bike. Absolutely ripping down this one, Tonarts. Can the Even Belgian in looks like he's going fast. the field on this one? <laughs> I said, even in slow motion, they look like they're going fast on this track, Marty. They are indeed. Uh, DNF there, unfortunately, for Ben Tullet oh. along the bottom of your screen. Is Yanni Vermeersch. He's uh, running uh, this section. 
So tw uh, 17 seconds, 20 seconds and 21. That's just the time gaps to that uh, chasing group. I don't know if we'll see a replay of that, but Ertz came over that little embankment there, and you can see he had his foot out, so I can tell. Here we go. This is the replay of it. Has a, Comes up, whoa, with his foot <laughs> out. Just too hot into that, and uh, that tells me everything. Right? That tells me that he is absolutely, he knows he has a small gap, and he's trying to push the pace as they come into this section. This is a weird little section. Kind of, It had a lot of rocks in it when I wrote it, but I was up where the spectators were. I don't think I knew that lower line broke in the way that it did, so that looks like that's a, a, a super highway. Now we see Sweet coming into it. And this is a um, this is a decisive moment in the race right now, Marty, because Sweet knows that the damage is being done. He knows that Two Merits is going as hard as he can. He knows now that he has to go as hard as he can to be able to either match or take back the time. And it's uh, now it's that now it's that game of can I do this and can you do that and who's going to going as hard as they can be able to master this track as he comes down into that 180 section. Boom! That test is done. Up onto the grass. Going to go back down to that lower section. Let's see how Sweet takes it. Oh, little error. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Going 100% small errors. You're going to start to see this as they go as hard as they can. Let's see how Sweet does. Does nails that section beautifully and uh, gets on to the climb. It's those little errors that creep into the, the ride. We saw how much that, uh, that little uh, error by Tom Pidcock handed the lead on this section to Tone Arts. He's uh, fighting just in front of this uh, group of Lars van der Haar and uh, Ellie Isabit. And then a little, back, little gap back to Quentin Hermans and Corne van Kessel for uh, telling it Bal was. Just over 34 minutes of racing so far. And yeah, Marty, as you can tell, the rubber band here on these sections, you can only take one line. There's a lot of ruts that carry these riders, carry their speed through these turns. And with all those ruts comes one line. So with the one liners, there um, there is a big rubber band effect. You can see air slicing and dicing coming through this, leaning on the bike, turning, pushing, punching back, looking back to see, am I holding this gap over sweep or is he taking back time? You can see this is actually the race, which is different than a Vanderpool race. It's different than when Wap and Anderson race. These riders are racing a totally different style of race. Now, head to head, you can see Sweet looking back there on that section that goes back on the course. You see Pidcock able to execute that 180 with ease this time. So that was just a uh, that was just a small error. It happens, but that's what's created the race gap here that Fortune Ertz as he goes through the start finish area. Four laps to go this time for a leader. So uh, Tone Arts going through the line and the gap back to Swake is now 11 seconds. And then the next group of Van der Haar, Pidcock and Isabit. Van der Haar has a Vinder. glance back. Vanderhaar looking to be the ultimate teammate, not chased down. Tunerts waiting for his other teammates. So not a, not necessarily concerned with getting on the podium himself right now. More that he wants to see Tunerts take the victory. It looks like. Swake is uh, the, probably the rider in this situation has uh, the opportunity to try and close this one back up to Tone Arts. If he does, he's got to do it, and he's got to do it quickly. Do you think? We're used to Tone Art doing that real charge and then having, he, do you feel that he can just hold this pressure now for the rest of the race or he's got to settle down at some point? I mean, I think he's going as hard as he can go. I think that he's racing a different race than he normally does. He's not usually in a position where he's off the front, but Sweet, you know, smells definitely that there's an opportunity here. He knows that this is one of the classics he wants to take the win here. And uh, <laughs> this is just going to be a test of if, um, if Ertz can continue to nail these sections one after one. But what a beautiful opportunity for him to be able to ride in the Belgian champion's jersey in such a classic against a uh, another Belgian. This is, uh, this is proper cyclocross in Belgium right now. It is. It's a classic big roar from the crowd. Lap 7 of 10. We are on the crowd really getting behind. This man flying the flag for Belgium as he goes on to another deep sandy descent, a little kick out of the back wheel as he goes through there. Thanks for getting on board today here live on GCN Racing. It's the Telenet Super Prestige Series round five from Zonhoven. There's your chasing group, Van der Haar, Pidcock, Isabit and Van Kessel with your solo leader and Swake is, he smelled the, the uh, he can get back into this one. He can uh, almost, you would say, feel that Tone Arts ahead of him maybe is just starting to tire as he just closes down the uh, 
the gap just a few meters. The confidence will just grow now from Swake. That's right, yeah, it will. It definitely, Sweet is taking back a small amount of time, but Ertz is able to hold on. They've got, you know, probably about 20-plus uh, minutes left of racing. So there's, there is a there is definitely a chance that these riders come back together. But what damage has that that gap that Pitcock was able to to uh, create for Toon Ertz, what has that done to Sweet? Sweet's had to go in. He's had to dig very, very deep to be able to get back to um, to Toon Ertz. And I think that that, once he connects, if if he's able to connect, that is going to have a different impact. Ertz, I don't think we'll lose motivation. If Ertz, is, um, if Ertz is feeling good, that's a moment when he reconnects to just drill the pace again because he knows how hard he's gone. There is where we saw Ertz last time have to take his leg off, going a little bit hot into that. But that will be the moment when we see what happens with uh, with Toon Ertz. If you weren't with us at the beginning, this man is the, the leader in the general classification with 45 points. He's level with Lauren Swake, who's in second. Quentin Hermes is third level with Corny Van Kessel with 43 points. Issa Bits uh, just behind Laz, Lars Van der Haar, who's in fifth. Tom Pitcock is seventh in the Elite Championship with 38. Jens Adams, Tim Malia, and Yanni Vermeers is the top 10 with uh, 21 points. Pitcock leading in the under 23 classification ahead of Ben Turner and uh, Ryan Camp with Kilo, Mean, Bacar, Mason, Benoist, Van der Bosch, and Achterberg. That's the top 10 in the under 23 classification. Nine seconds between Tonarts and Laurel Swain. Can he get back on terms and give us a race for the top step? on the podium the third spot is a battle at the moment between Lars van der Haar, Thomas, Tom Pidcock and Ellie Isabet can they get back in here the history of this race we go back through the years Niels Albert has taken this one Sven Nace and Jadenic Stibar back in 2010 Albert again in 2011 Nace back-to-back -back victories in 2012 13 Kevin Powers in 2014 Wout van Aert in 15 then back-to-back -back victories from van der Poel in 16 17 and 18 so a new name is going to sit at the top of the Roll Call of Honor here in one of the most iconic cyclocross races in the world. Will it be Tonart? Will it be uh, Laurens Swake? Van der Haar, little mistake there. That allows Ellie Isabet to come past him in exactly the same uh, place where uh, Pitcock had his problem some laps ago. That's right, yeah. Now we're seeing that it's... Uh, you know, it's Ely Easterbit who is taking maybe the first half of this race a little less, but now is in a, po a podium position with Vanderhart chasing and Pidcock trying to close down any damage that's been done. It's uh, that section is so fast and that rut will throw you. So you, you have to come into that section almost with a speed limit. You have to know like, okay, I need to come into it at this speed. If I come into it too slow, I won't make it through. If I come into it too fast, I'm gonna pop through. So you can see the look now on Lauren Sweet's face. He's absolutely gassed, trying to close down this gap to a determined uh, tune Ertz. There is just no respite at all, really, on this course, is there? No, there isn't, and I think that uh, I think that you're seeing now the look on Tunert's face. He's doing a different effort than he's normally than he normally does. It'll be curious to see as he has uh, now goes into the seventh lap if there is an, if the, if this does impact his last uh, last lap in the race. If Sweet's able to continue his upward trajectory, taking back time, he's got it down to eight eight nine seconds from uh, from 16. So yeah, he's definitely been doing some damage slowly but surely taking it back. But will it be enough? You can see that they're both on the limit and now we've got Lars Vanderhaar and he would easily be coming in for third and fourth place for that last step on the podium. Three laps to go this time. Vanderhaar and Isabit and uh, Tom Pidcock's being joined by Corny Van Kessel and Quentin Hermans. 33 seconds between those groups of the battle for the third spot on the podium is still very much alive. Can this man from Pau Sals and Bingo catch the Belgian champion from Telenet Balwas uh, Lyons? Tonarts is in you can see he's in a world of pain here. Lap eight of ten we are on here in Zonhoven. With this beautiful overhead shot, you're able to see all the ruts there in the uh, in the mud. This top section is all grass. You can see the rut there. So this course is rut, rut, rut. Everything has a rut. They come through, boom, rut there. Coming back up now into that big, famous sand descent um, here in Zonhova, which is the course has become known for. And now Sweet is looking at Ken, uh, Ken, Ken to keep this pace up that's the question right that is the question on everyone's mind can you keep that up there's ruts down at the bottom there where the water's coming two even taking a look back now see what is the damage that i'm doing 
Should I try to ride this? Should I get off? Boom, getting off, getting right back on the bike. Let's see how the body language of Lawrence Tweet here. Boom, off the bike, around, right back on. You can see they look evenly matched right now, Marty. They are indeed. He's, uh, again, you could almost see that, would you say, see a little essence of panic creeping in when he's looking back to see where Laurent Swake is. I think it's tough. You know, you're doing everything that you can, and there's not, and you're not seeing a huge uh, advantage being gained. So you know that the that it's imminent. That you're going to lock horns with a competitor, and the question is, can I keep it up? Is are they going to have a mistake? And can I continue to ride this thing lap after lap, keep my head on? So now you can see Squeak getting closer and closer. So Squeak, when he makes contact, and it does look as though he will, although these shots are reflective because they're uh, while he's gotten close to each lap, he's still very far away because they're running. Now Ertz is thinking about a different type of race, one where he's got to race against Tune Ertz. He's going to need to start to study his lines and see where he can potentially take out time on Tune Ertz in a head-to-head -head battle, which was different than what he was doing before, where he was just riding the course solo, which he's pretty much done all day. Do you think almost as well he's got to, when Swate gets in within five seconds, six seconds of getting back onto him, that he's almost got to think of, okay, how am I going to save some energy? How am I going to save the power? If he gets on, I've got to be too gas. If he then goes, I've got to be able to react. It looks like Tunarts is still drilling it, still going as hard as he can, hoping that there's an opportunity for, for someone to make a mistake, for, for Sweet to have a problem, for him to be able to nail a section clean, go a little bit faster than he had been. But you can see he's already bending the tape on this. But Sweet's able to find a second here or there, as you see him so close to those barriers coming through, almost hitting a ton of poles just in that one section. He's really got this course locked down. He's got the tire pressure perfect on the day. And you can see Eric. It's now doing the look back consistently, realizing I'm going as hard as I can and that it's not a sure thing that I'm going to win today's race. So now again, he's thinking about a different type of uh, a different type of tactic, what he can do. He's got good legs. He's gone as hard as he can, but he's also used matches. So it might be now time for them both to take a bit of a breather, recover now that they've kind of gotten themselves back together here and, um, and take an opportunity to uh, to go at this last lap of the race as we come in for eight. We're coming into nine to go to uh, to recalibrate. Lauren Swake is almost done. We have got a race on our hands and he gets back up to Tonart who is still attacking this course with everything that he's got. If he's got anything left, he's still trying to put the man who's chasing down to try and get back on terms with him in a world of hurt. What a season the man in second place is having. He's been there. He's had one DNF at the Koppenberg. He's been out of the top 10, really, you would say, uh, just once this season. So many any podium finishes he's had some uh, great success as well and he's had his hands in the air a few times as uh, Lauren Swake Tonarts nails that section both of these I riders think that, absolutely on the limit here I think that uh, Sweet thought that when he got to Tune Eric's that Tune was going to sit up and was going to let him get back on and they were going to kind of have a reassessment of the uh, the lay of the land but that's not what happened like I said Eric's the, always the racer the uh, very strong road rider very tactically savvy sees that Sweet's getting close and then lays it down puts all his chips on the table and starts to do that last two lap dance looking back seeing am I keeping him distance am I going hard this is the part of the course where you see there's a lot of wind so it's very much mano y mano and, um, and and if he wants to continue to go all in he's going to need to do that here but it looks like they have really gassed each other you can see the looks on their face here through this section they're both absolutely gassed <laughs> they look totally cooked the pair of them they have uh, been standing in the ring just like a prize fight these two and uh, Tone Arts, he's got the glasses on, so you can't see his eyes. Laurent Swing, because he doesn't wear the glasses, he doesn't give it doesn't hide anything, does it? You can see the effort, see the emotion, and he makes contact. Now as we get on to the road section. It's two. We two. have got a battle. Yeah, and, and but Sweet has had to do a lot of work to get there. I mean, that effort could have been used to draw, drill away from the front group and to create a 15 to 20 second gap. But instead, he's had to use that effort to just be able to get back in the front of the race and get on top of the merits, who was able to take that gap when, um, when uh, Tom Pidcock had that problem in the 180 section.
What a race. And a back to our chasing group, Lars van der Haar, just kicking some of the, the sand and dirt out of that. Ellie Isabet, Lars van der Haar, Corny van Kessel, Quentin Hermes, then a bit of a gap now. Back to Tom Pidcock, this finishing straight. I love the way that this, the finish here at Zonhoven, the way it just kicks you down. We had some, we've had some great finishes here over the years. And your in terms of gut feeling, who's the better sprinter out of these two? Man, it's tough to say. I think that uh, I think that it would be very evenly matched, and I think I have to say that I'm just I'm impressed with Sweet because now he's going to go to the front. He's going to see the front of the race for the first time as we see a split screen of how these riders have come down this sand section each uh, individually, and you can see the different style, which is what I've been talking about, Marty. But you can see that they're both riding this with a lot of confidence. But I think what they're trying to show here is who's riding it a little bit faster. And it looks as though Sweet is riding just a little bit faster through this downhill section as we see them actually making their way over there. So Sweet decides to take the front here through this section. This is the first time that he's seen the front of the race. Oh, but I take that back. It is now Kieran Eriks that made it to the front. And he's decided that I'm going to take uh, I'm going to take over here and I'm going to go through this section first. So Eriks uh, drilling the pace still, really taking command of this race today. And Sweet, again, taking notes now. Now that you can see where there's chinks in the armor with Kieran Eriks, where is there a place that I can take a little bit of time and lay an attack down and string some sections together to create a, a race winning move. Tonarts can just a little push here uh, to uh, to wait on these sections. He knows that he's got these descents dialed in, make it back in to stay with him. Great fight between uh, these two. Tonarts dismount on the, this run-up. Fighting back there's your chasing group behind. Two leaders are on the run up lap nine of ten. If you're just joining us today, welcome aboard here on GCN Racing. We are on round five of the Telenet Super Prestige series. One of the classics here in Zonhoven. There can be no mistakes, can there now on these uh, final couple of laps? It's, uh, it's easier said than done with these uh, long sandy descents. That's right. I mean, it is the best in the world, and we're seeing it one of the most challenging tracks that's out there. Fast, steep descents, and sand. So the opportunity to make an error is very, very high, even with the world's best. This track really pushes them to their maximum. You see a super motivated tune air. It's really laying down, pushing the pace on a uh, determined Lauren Sweet, who's able to take the gap back. I have to say, Marty, that tune air is looking very strong today. The way that he was running up the hill um, just tells me that he's got some. Uh, that he's, that he's got something left in there. It's not that he pushed it really hard and that he's just kind of now he's sat back and he's lost motivation. He's very motivated to try for the win here today. Is indeed Swake gets on almost again, uses that, that section. I think what's great about this this camera shot, and on, on, especially on a, on a course like this, is being able to see the different sections of a, of a cyclocross course that, that suit different styles of rider. That's right, and that's this is this is exactly what I'm talking about here, Marty, with uh, Lauren Sweet sitting back and watching Tune Eric. Right now, he can see as we come into that out of the sand pit. I can see that I'm that Tune Eric isn't as good as I am in that section. Right, he had to take his foot out. He didn't kind of nail the posts as quick. He's looking through Eric's, looking to see where the line is, where he's taking it. But that is definitely going to be a note for next lap. For, uh, for a rider like Sweet. He's going to know Ertz didn't ride that section as fast as I did, and maybe, I don't know this for a fact, maybe that's where uh, where Lauren Sweet tries to open up a gap after the top of that sand hill. Although, the thing is, is Ertz is going to be able to play to his strength, which is running. He's going to be able to take a little bit, uh, put put uh, Sweet under pressure. So if Sweet's able to get to the front on that sand descent and take it out, lead that out, he might have an opportunity to put a little bit of time into two Ertz. Again, it looks like this section here in particular is one that Tone Arts really feels that saves him, he favors him. Just had a little bit of an attack, this uh, 180 to this hot dog turn in the sand and up this little climb has been uh, dialed into perfection throughout this uh, race so far. Has to just kick over to the left, Swake battling back as Tone Arts just again, like, like one or two meters he opens up as he attacks through that section, has a glance back over the shoulder. He's just trying to put Swake on the ropes here. 
Yeah, I have to say, Tunerich looks really good today as we see a uh, mountain biker on the side of the course trying to come through, not hitting any traffic there. But you see Ertz is very strong in this section, but then it's not just being strong in that uphill section in the sand. That's that downhill off camber turn that you have to hit the rut to be able to go fast. It's this section, Marty, where it comes back together every time because you can see the tape is very windy through here. You'd have to lay down a lot of power. We've seen famous battles with Niels Albert and Sven Nies from this very section, cutting the course, ripping through these sand sections, using and slicing and dicing through these ruts. But um, that is where the race comes back together traditionally, and then they have to end up in a, uh, in a sprint finish here. And it's just about the same, man. He's uh, trying to find a way through, and he does. He comes through to the front. Van Kessel is on the front of this group that it contains his teammate Lars van der Haar on the back, and uh, Ellie is a bit sandwiched in the middle. Quentin Hermans, good day yesterday in Essen. And, uh, just off the back of that group is Tom Pidcock. Uh, Cameron Mason is still within that uh, top 30 riders going through the line. One I think lap that to go, one to go, and all to play for here. Don over Laurel Swake and a Tonart. What a race they have given us today. Now, the mental game, the psychological battle will begin behind Van der Haar is fighting for that podium spot. That's right, and I think right through that section before, Kuneritz actually went outside of the line and allowed and made Lauren Sweet take the line to come through. I think that Ertz not only wanted to see how Lauren Sweet and how the finish would play out if Lauren Sweet was in front of him, but also I think that he wants to attack Lauren Sweet from the back and come past him without him having having the know-how that he's going to do it. He doesn't want to race this from the front. He wants to lay down a decisive, uh, you know, attack that's going to really mean something when he goes. So I think. My inclination is that Eric wanted to be behind Sweet, gave him the lead, and there you go. Exactly what I meant. And Tone Arts attacks Laurent Sweet. Can Sweet battle back Arts through these sections? He knows that he feel that he's got the advantage on the sandy descent. Sweet's got good power out of these turns. Arts again. A little burn here from the Telenet Bowers lines. Can he just find a small advantage? The sprint for the third spot on the podium is going to come out of this group. Three riders from Telenet Bowers lines. Harriman hits the front on this one. Arts. Oh, Sweet goes down. That's it it's, uh, it just tightens the shoe. That shows the errors that can creep in. And uh, that's the last lap. Tonarts now is going to ride away to victory. Heartbreak for Laurel Swake on that descent. Man, the adrenaline was high. That was a moment where we said that uh, Ertz was looking to make a big attack and uh, and Sweet not not only was he able to match it, but comes in just a little off kilter. You see the world's best riders, exactly what I was talking about. Sweet, unfortunately, not able to execute that perfectly. Just comes just a little bit off at the highest pace of the race, ends up going down in the sand. He's back on his bike and riding, but after all the chasing and all the hard effort that he's already put in, Toon Ertz was able to use that uh, that technical prowess and the snap that he's got in his legs today to be able to just push Sweet just far enough, and now he looks back and he realizes the damage that's been done. It just shows the highest level, as we all say, the minutest of errors sometimes can be the dim uh, is the difference between winning and losing. Laurent Sweet just going in a little bit in uh, tight into that corner, going down, hands the lead to Tone Arts, who had fought his way through to the front. Look at Arts on this descent. There's the head-on shot there of Sweet going down. But at least it was in the sand, and you can see the adoration that the fans have for him. He's right back on his machine, and like I was saying, you can see now the fans on the side of the course are really cheering for the riders as they come through, giving them a lot of motivation. They're, they're, um, they're impressed by all the skill that was put out here today and the battle that uh, Lauren Sweet and Tune Eric were able to put on in the show and the entertainment that they, they provided. It was a beautiful, beautiful effort. The race is not over, but uh, but Tune Eric's able to do that uppercut attack from behind and, and then catch uh, catch Lauren Sweet a little bit off guard, knew that he was down. It's like a good boxing match, Marty. He knew that there was an opportunity. He waited. He played his cards tactically perfectly. Again, Eric's having trouble with this section in particular, just riding a little squirrely in this at 100%. Toon knows that this isn't in the bag completely. He has a good competitor behind him, but, um, but so far he has played his hand very well today. 
It has been a great race from start to finish here in Zondhoven. The winner in Bohm looking for his uh, second victory in the series. Been a consistent season for Tonart. Got a feel for this rider today. Just a little bit of a shake there. He's been absolutely on the limit. This is the last lap here. Pau Sausen, big old rider. He really gave us a thrilling race. And again, you can't give up at all on this course. You've got to get back, re collect yourself. It's still, a, it's still lots of technical sections to come. Yeah, I mean, the overall is in Lawrence Week and Tunert's head right now. You know, on the uh, podcast that I did with Tunert's, he said that he wants to win the overall of the Super Prestige. It's one of the six that he wants to win in his career. So, yeah, he's got the uh, he's got the European Champs jersey. He's got the Belgian jersey. He's got the World Cup overall. He wants to take the Super Prestige and the uh, DVV as well as um, a couple of others. So, World Championships being that last monument that he wants he wants to finish out before his career is done. So this is a big effort for him today, but a big opportunity to kind of take another point away from Sweek as they're tied for first place overall in this series. Sweek still pressing on. A few of you asking where Cameron Mason is. 28th, you can see there for Cam Mason from Trinity Racing today. And Hermans is almost on here. Uh, Quentin Hermans senses that he could make it a 1-2 here for Telenet Bawas Lions. It's not over at all in the battles for the podium places. They could still change here. Arts has a glance back over the shoulder. There's the gap back, 23 seconds now after that tumble by Swake on that descent. It's been a hard season for two Nerds, Marty. I think he's not had as many victories as he would have expected or wanted, um, but this was an opportunity and he sees the moment. I think he's going to be really not only proud of this, but just this is going to propel his uh, the last half of his season in a big way. It's going to bring him a lot of confidence from the training blocks that he's been doing as he's able to put his hands up here at the finish line in Zonhova. Tonart points to the screen above the line. The Belgian champion from Telenet Bauer's Lions high fives the crowd. He takes the victory. A very well deserved after a great race today from the Belgian champion. Whereas Laurent Swake, what a battle he gave us. The Power Thousand being goal rider. Phenomenal performance. That's her error at the top of that descent. A tumble by Laurent Swake. Tonart has nailed that descent yet again. Little wave to the crowd as he comes in. Eli Isabit comes across the line for third place. And behind him will be Quentin Herrmans. So Hermans comes across the line for fourth. And then it's Van der Haar. And Van Kessel. Tom Pitcock will be seventh today. Tom Pitcock on to the road. Solid day for Tom Pitcock today. He can take some real positives away from this ride. Definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. Mix it up in the front. Rode the front of the race. Had a go at it. Was really thrown down. Definitely changed the outcome of the race in a big way. Um, yeah. Definitely put riders on the limit. I think any time that Pitcock goes to the front, the uh, no matter what day, when, they realize, hey, this guy's been on the podium of just about every race that he's entered. Mm -hmm. You know, he has the potential to win. So there's no question that the riders look at that as a serious threat when he decides to hit the front. As we see, I think Jens Adams coming through potentially here. Yep, it is, in fact, for... Uh, for eighth place. Good solid ride hit today from Jens Adams. Yeah, woman at 31, and there you go, sporting uh, handshake and pat on the back. What a battle that they had. I love that, the smiles between the two uh, riders. What a race they gave yeah, us. Yeah, for sure. I, I think Sweet's like, hey man, you, <laughs> you hit me good there in the back. And he's like, yeah, I did. <laughs> I did, and you got me. And then I uh, then I decided to uh, soil sample some of that sand. <laughs> Uh, just uh, coming in there, David van der Poel, and he's going to take ninth, Marcel Meissen, good uh, solid ride again today for Marcel Meissen, 10th place of the German champion, to see the national champion's jersey is Yanni Vermeersch, who's going to be the next uh, rider in, Marcel Meissen's making some good progress the last few races. Yeah, he's been riding strong, you know, the German champ. He's been in the game for a long time as we see uh, Randy Vermeer here having a hard time with this one. This is a tough, tough, tough course. 
And then we see there is uh, Tom Mayusin and uh, Joris Neubenhaus coming back from a uh, pretty pretty hard start. Uh, all these riders, super solid days out there. Just, you know, this is a course that either suits you or it doesn't. I think that, um, yeah, for someone like Meissen, this might be something that he really likes. Um, for someone like Mayusin, he may like parts of it, but he might not like the running or he might not like this or that. Um, yeah, Don Soap coming in there. There's just a lot of, uh, there's a lot of different things that happen on a track like this. And it's a, uh, it, it is a specialized course. It's something unique that you don't see every day. As we see the uh, the divot there left in the sand from, from Lawrence Sweet. So coming in uh, next will be Tone van den Bosch. Good day today from van den Bosch. That's 14th from Tone van den Bosch. So some young riders getting up here into the uh, top 20 places. Just sits up, stretches out that back. Very heavy on the back today, this course. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, all the on, off, the heavy pedaling, the sand, everything. You know, it's different than a race like Coxida where you have to push a big gear for a long time through deep, heavy sand. This sand is more compact, it's faster, it has more flow to it. A lot of it where you're pedaling through it has been matted down and it's downhill. So definitely a different skill set, not as heavy on the back as something like Coxida, but because of all of the running and the steep bits and um, such such a, I don't know, just 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 a different, totally different type of track. So yeah, very challenging course out there. I'm sure that there's some sore backs. So thanks for all your uh, your chat today. There's Tone Arts. Let's have a little look back at uh, the highlights on how that race uh, panned out. It was a fast start. Maybe Issa Bits uh, getting a good start. Lars van der Hart did as well. A big bunch for a lot of the time. Descent Tone Arts, you can see there in second place at that point, definitely had it dialed in. Tom Pidcock got up there, made it uh, into this front group. And this was the, this was where that little mistake by Pidcock just shows the minutest of errors, as we all uh, we talk about in cyclocross. Hands the hands the lead there to Tone Arts. That's right, yeah, and then Ertz takes the driver's seat, absolutely starts ripping this course, realizes that he's got a gap at uh, at 15 plus seconds and is able to string it out. Lauren Sweet realizes the damage that's happening and knows that he has to take a big chase down. Pitcock able to try and to, uh, take take uh, do damage control, bring it back as quickly as he can, but it is, uh, it wasn't meant to be as the riders in the chase had to form behind Lauren Sweet and tune Ertz after they locked back up, Marty. And Sweet getting on to their uh, to Tone Arts. And uh, Pate was down to a battle between uh, these two riders. Tone Arts was throwing everything in the tactics book, everything left in the power. This is where it all came unstuck. Long sweet that uh, looked like it. There was this, we saw Tone Arts clearing some rocks off some of the, the descents. There's quite a lot of hidden sort of rocks underneath the sand on some of these sections. That's right, and I was talking about it as we see Ertz here pointing at his uh, name on the finish banner. He was so happy to be able to take this win. This is a track that has so many little holes, little little things that can just take you out and, uh, and derail your day, as we see happen to the second place finisher there, Lauren Sweet, but put up a fantastic uh, fantastic show for us today. Ely Easterbit rounding out the podium in third. Great day out. Quentin Harriman, as you see there, in fourth place. It's a good weekend for him, Van der Haar and uh, Van Kessel. We said it was going to be epic at the beginning. Two, um, <laughs> two absolutely epic battles that we've had uh, today across uh, all of the races. But Lawrence Sweek, uh, he he really is. He's one of those riders for me. He's 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 a, such a gutsy fighter as well. Yeah. Yeah, he's gonna need a massage tonight on that uh, on that shoulder blade area. I think that was a uh, that was a brutal fall, but obviously in sand. But no matter what, when the adrenaline's pumping, when you're going as hard as you absolutely can to have something like that happen, you heard the crowd. I think that that's that was cool just to hear the oh, and then when you're tuned air, it's you realize there's a problem, and now the adrenaline hits him, and he has to go 110 percent to be able to make sure that he takes as much of this and puts the pin in this thing and finishes it off. Absolutely, you could hear the roars from the crowd every time they went uh, down that descent. I think that's the beauty of this this course, isn't it? When you get that sort of amp natural amphitheater that, that you have here, and it, it sort of get this cacophony of sound in the bowl.
That's right, man. It was uh, it was definitely wild. I mean, just to see a rider at that level have a crash that hard, there's just uh, there's nothing else to say. Like they were absolutely riding on their maximum. Just like we had said when we were calling the coverage, it was a super 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 race to be able to call. It was a fun race to watch, and it definitely was a different dynamic than we've seen in the past. So great to see uh, the race go away, the race to come back, and then for Tuneritz to be able to continue to push the pace. I have to say personally, Marty, I think that Eretz was on uh, was on a fantastic day today. He looked like he was just on a perfect form. He had it some small errors which um which ended would have added up w allowing um lauren sweet to be able to get back but in the end he was still the strongest and able to put the whole thing together and finish it off we're seeing quite a lot of victories this season as well being sort of spread out across a lot of riders we we say it in the women's side we and also in the racing tone arts he's been super consistent second victory in in the super prestige series he took that that victory in in bohm and and you talk about it a lot in commentary and it's such a great insight in where different riders are in the, in their form cycles. And he looks like he's hitting that, that good form just at the right time where maybe those sort of riders that were really smashing it at the beginning of the season, like Ellie Isabel are just starting to maybe look a little bit fatigued. Yeah, I think that uh, they do. Each of them has to. That's how it should feel. That's how it should work. You know, each rider has a peak and then has a valley and then has a peak um, to be able to get a couple of those out of a season is a is a yeah, that's a true professional to be able to know when to pull the reins, go down, do a training camp, take rest, come back fully fresh, ready to go um, with the big Christmas period coming up. I'm sure a lot of these riders, some are maybe going too good too soon. It's all about what we used to say is feathering the form. It's very, very, very important to be able to feather the form and know when to pick your spots. We're going to bring you highlights of all of the races. If you want to, haven't seen the women's race and you want to go back and watch it now, you can look away. So we're going to have some highlights of the women's race as well. So we'll go through a full highlights right from the beginning. So uh, you have been warned in three, two, one. Zon over super prestige round five. And it was Inga van der Heiden that got a great start in what is a race that you could call the race of Sanakant five times the winner. Looking for a sick victory early on with Celine Del Carmen Alvarado leading out. Sanakant was looking good on the opening laps. Yeah, I would be wondering what it would be like to take a uh, to take a sled down there. That's all we're thinking about here in Massachusetts because it's been snowing so much. But these riders are riding their bikes down that wild sand descent. And it was uh, Celine Del Carmen Alvarado, Anna Marie Wurst, and... Um, and uh, Sana Khan and Inga van der Heiden that were able to show themselves as the front four for this race. With Yara Castellan able to just slowly but surely make her way back as well as Alice Arzufi putting three, all three of the 777.BE riders up front. But, um, but in the end, it wasn't meant to be. A small group formed and it was um, and it was Celine Del Carmen Alvarado and Anna Marie Wurst that were able to come back together and do battle at the front. Celine Del Carmen Alvarado first coming through. Azufi, Van der Heiden and Castellan just behind. It would then come down to a battle between those two riders. The former European champion, the current under 23 Euro champion. Some back markers just started to get into uh, between the leading group. The leading duo, though, got caught together. Yara Castelline almost sensed that she could get back into the mix. Off the small descent and onto the road. It was Alvarado that opened up the sprint. But Anna Marie Hurst come through to take her first victory in the Telenet Super Prestige Series this season. Alvarado, already with two victories, has to settle for second while Yara Castelline the line makes up the podium in third place. There's confirmation of your podium. Anna Marie Fuerst from Celine Del Carmen Alvarado and Yara Castelline, the men's elite race. Now it was on to the men, yeah, and it was uh, it was definitely a shootout here, but it was the telling that Balawaza team taking the, the bull by the horns, as we say here, Marty, going all through there, spread out big gaps. It was Quinton Hermans, Toon Ertz, Lauren Sweek, and Tom Pidcock are the riders that we're seeing right now. Everybody had a throw at the front. They all took their time, but there it was, the moment that decided a big part of this race and, and uh, wrote the script. It was Tom Pidcock having an error there in the 180 section. 
which gave this man in the front here to air. It's a very big gap, 16 seconds. Lawrence Sweet knew that he had to hit out and try to chase it down. And there we see Lawrence Sweet, and it was uh, it was Pidcock trying to kind of do damage control and bring down that gap, but it wasn't meant to be as he threw two airs here going all out. It was Sweet that was able to close the gap down, making it a two-up race. Little by little, Sweet found his way back up towards the front on lap eight. Would it come down to a sprint between these two riders? Tonart, the Belgian champion, with Sweet behind him. He was pushing him all the way. Little turns, little attacks, but it would be on the final big sandy descent where Laurent Sweet took a huge tumble a big uh, intake of breath and a roar from the crowd signal to tone arts that he had the lead he still checked back over his shoulder to see where swake was but it was a second victory in the telenet super prestige series of this winter for tone arts from telenet bowers lions second place today for Lawrence swake what a battle he gave us while well, third place belonged to his teammate Ellie Isabet, just ahead of Quinton Hermans of the Telling That Malwaz Alliance. Great rerun there again. I think every time, I think now, whenever I watch that that corner for Lauren Swing, it was just that kind of co collective <laughs> intake of shock um, from yeah. from the crowd that went up. Yeah, man, that was a tough, that was, a, I mean, he was going as fast as he would go. You know, that was the fastest he probably went all day on that track. He absolutely ripped that turn, just caught that rut just a little off. I had to say that when we saw Toon Air, it's kind of maintaining that area, getting those rocks out of there. I wouldn't be surprised if some more kind of kind of came out, showed themselves that rut got a little too deep at, uh, at the highest of speeds. Unfortunately, Lawrence Sweet was the victim there. It just shows again, doesn't it, the in terms of, of a course and how it rides lap on lap. One lap, one line is fine. The next time you come around, you've had that whole field go through it. Someone's made a mistake, carved something out. The next time you go around, you try and pick that same line that you might have chosen in, in your pre-ride. The next time you go around, it's just completely disappeared. Yeah, it has. And I think that too, at speed, these these lines change. And when you go into them, like I was saying before about the 180, you go into it too fast, you've got problems. You go into it too slow, you can't get all the way through. You have to hit it at just the right speed. But Toon Eretz was really good on today's track. And he was able to push the pace, put Lawrence Week under pressure. And that's what cyclocross is, a mistake. It gained Toon Eretz that opportunity to take a big win in his career. And um, I believe take the overall now, um, the first place in the overall standings of the Super Prestige. Going in, they were uh, first and second, but level on points. We are ready for the podiums. Let's go down. The riders are uh, making their way to the podium for the presentation. Ellie East a bit there. Tom Pidcock, he was leading going in to today in the under-23 classification. The British champion still uh, leading in that classification. He had 32 points to Ben Turner's uh, 17. Uh, good day out uh, for Tom Pidcock again today. Another uh, top 10 position. Always a good chat behind the podium. Definitely a good chat. I think that these guys had a good battle out there today. They know each other well. I think that, like I said uh, throughout, you know, they're all pretty good friends. I think they have a they have a chit chat, you know, just to check in on everybody. This is a nice opportunity to see them. Um, Pitcock is the only guy that's not speaking uh, Dutch or Flemish as his uh, as his first language. Lauren Swaik having a little chat there with Ellie Isabet, just explaining. You could see the hand gestures there, can't you? Explaining his his tumble to Isabet. Yeah, he's going to say, yeah, and I just came straight off the bike and boom, I shook the earth. <laughs> I think like a lot of people is going to be clearing some sand out of uh, for, a, for about a week in that one, I think, after that uh, that tumble. Yep, and as we see here, Ilya Easterby coming out, shaking hands with all of the uh, race delegation, being able to say hello, coming up on that third place on the podium. In uh, in second place, it will be that man right there, Lawrence Swaik. Lawrence Swaik getting ready to uh, head out. There's Ellie Isabet on to the podium. Power sales and bing golf. It's not easy for them today. They have to uh, settle, you would say, for second and third. But a solid uh, day out for them again. Lawrence Swaik 
is your second place rider. Big respect to him. What a day he gave us. He did give us, yeah. And what a podium they have there, Marty. That thing looks like a, uh, that thing looks like a, a billboard in Las Vegas. <laughs> it is a good one. I like that. It's uh, you got to have plenty of sparkly lights. Laurel Swig. You do. Waiting for our first place rider on a good day. Is this coming into the part of the season where this man can really dominate? Tonarts, the fan club are out. The Belgian champion adds his name to a historic roll call of honor here in Zonhoven. He's uh, won the Koppenberg in his career. I wonder how that ranks up there. He, when I interviewed him last year, he said that was his biggest win. He was, he was happy with that one. But uh, there's got to be up there with that. Definitely. I think uh, I think all the riders, you know, would love to win Zonhova. It is such an iconic race in, uh, in Belgian cyclocross history. So, yeah, you can see the, the telling that Balawaza fans are out there singing. They're psyched. I'm sure Sven Nace and the entire program. Uh, Tuneris is on three years more with that program. So he's got a great family there. And um, I'm sure they're all going to be celebrating this one. This is a, a huge victory for, uh, for Tuneris. It was indeed. Great day out. I hope you enjoyed that as much as uh, we did. It was uh, really uh, great. Two amazing uh, races today as our uh, top three head off the podium. We'll, uh, we'll stay and let's, uh, we'll see Tom Pidcock come onto the podium. So for the under 23 presentation as he's there for the Trinity Racing Team. Tom Pidcock is then leading in the uh, under 23 class, which they which they combine now, Jeremy, in, in the Super Prestige. Tom Pidcock, Very well, for Trinity nice. Racing, steps on. Very nice to see a little, uh, little, sorry, buddy, a little pat on the back there from Tuneris. Just a uh, a nice job, nice job today. Nice way to uh, dictate the race, as you see him wearing that Red Bull cap. Uh, getting some pecs on the cheek, very European style. And uh, Pidcock there is the winner of the under-23 classification today. I think he'll take a lot of positives away from that. We saw him on the front. Quite a few of the riders in that leading group hit the front. I love the little battle between him and Tonart. Absolutely. It was a great day for a, for a battle out there. And uh, Pidcock continuing to gain form and really start to show himself at the front of these races. And now it is uh, the two winners of the classification. A nice photo opportunity for two big champs. Good day out. Those are your two leaders in the elite and under 23 classifications next week it's the dvv trophy from ronza we are back with uh, that one remember don't forget please subscribe to gcn racing give our live a uh, thumbs up remember all of our uh, cyclocross is available on demand you can go back and watch it remember we want to hear from you as well we want to know where are you watching us if you're uh, if you're on the turbo on zwift you're training you're watching us in your bike shops send us a little video clip say hi if you're out practicing all the great stuff that jeremy's been teaching you in his how-to videos we want to hear from you get on the gcn app you can upload them through there and also via the websites and uh, from jeremy and myself we'll see you next week bye for now